Hey guys, welcome to the Hey DJ Show. I'm your host, DJ Jimenez. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you're over on YouTube, please go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe for more content. Remember, you can catch this podcast on the go wherever you get your podcasts. And do consider following me on every social media platform at Hey DJ Show. With all that boring stuff out of the way, I'm really happy to introduce my next guest, the host of the Press Any Button podcast, Nikki Smith and Eric Liv Keith. How are you guys doing today? Good. Doing well. Good. All right. Good question. Yes. Should I be able to hear you in here? No. Okay. Just just your voice. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, I think I can hear yours. I can hear yours. Oh, wait, no. Okay, just kidding. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I messed everything up. <laughs> yeah. No, they're like, so the uh, headphones are connected to the microphones. So you hear yourself. Uh, so like basically you monitor your own audio okay. where whatever you hear, that's what the audience is going to hear. Gotcha. Okay. It's a little different on ours. I think in ours, I can hear everybody. So I didn't know. You can just, hear everybody? Yeah, like in on our podcast. Oh, oh. When we have ours, our like yeah. on. You can we can hear everyone's voice in the Do mic. Do you use so. XLRs? Uh, I just I just have it plugged into the straight in the soundboard, so I have like a little splitter coming out. Of that's what it is. Yeah, uh, that's why. Okay. And and the headphones they're connected to the soundboard, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that's it. When you have the uh uh it connected to the microphones, like you only hear the microphone, like. Yeah. Gotcha. But when you have it connected to the soundboard, yeah, you can hear everybody. And those are the benefits. Like when I was going knee deep into it, <laughs> it's like if you have a podcast with, especially with multiple people and they're like on the other side of the room too, uh, for space, uh, that way you can hear the other person. Yeah. Because sometimes these headphones are like noise canceling and stuff like that. Very true. It's interesting to see like how your podcast is set up compared to our podcast. Yeah. It's like... Similar, but different. <laughs> uh, I, I want to see your setup. Like, it'd be dope. Uh, I, and that's the cool thing about podcasts, too. It's like, everybody can do it their own way. There's, like, some rules you have to follow, but overall, like, set-wise, to each their own. Like, yeah. yeah, 100%. Yeah, we have, like, kind of a strict format that we go by, but uh, we, we, we can always deviate, like, whenever we want, which is nice. Yeah. And just start talking about random shit. <laughs> yeah, which we do all the time. <laughs> yeah. So uh, for those listening and watching, uh, uh, Nikki and Eric, they have a podcast, Press Any Button Podcast. It's a video game podcast. Uh, and some they you guys upload like weekly? Or yeah, we do sometime. every other week. Yeah. So and uh, uh, they, they post video games. They, they talk about uh, fun video game facts and did you knows and stuff like that. Um I was super happy when you guys came out with the Metal Gear Solid 2. And oh, I'm nice. a huge Metal Gear Solid <laughs> fan. I, I listened to that one in its entirety. And uh, then you had your friend, um, uh, your old bandmate. Yeah, uh, Mark. Mark. Yeah, yeah, Mark. Uh, and uh, it, it, it was so cool. Like, I, I was, like, nerding out as he was, like, talking about that. I know a lot he about that game. Out. Yeah. I know a lot about that game. I'm a huge uh, Hideo Kojima fan. And, and Metal Gear in general. Uh, and there was some stuff that he, he was spitting that I, I actually did not know, especially when he talked about like it was like ahead of its time with the term memes. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't it, I knew it, but I didn't know it at the same time. Like when he said that, I was like, holy shit, that's true. I had to go on YouTube. <laughs> like I literally paused it, went on YouTube. I was like, really? Did they say the word memes? And they didn't. I was like, I'm learning something new. Wow. Awesome. Yeah, yeah I know. He so, really did seem to like look into the future for that game, I feel like. Like, you know, you're talking about, like, people would stick their, to their own ponds and stuff like that, and that would be their primary source of information. And I feel like, man, that's definitely true today. It, it, dude, yeah. it's like the modern 1984 kind of exactly. thing. Exactly. Like, oh, well, oh, my. It, 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 it's freaky. Like, I had never played that game. So I just played it, you know, when we did the episode. And so it really was like, wow, this could have came out today. <laughs> it's still very relevant. Yeah. So, a uh, question on on your podcast: Do you guys try to play the game and then do research before you like talk about it, or how 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 does your podcast work? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's that's exactly right. We try to like uh, play the game. We try to look stuff up on Wikipedia. Look up uh, actually, Wikipedia can be a good source for other sources. Like you find an interview or something. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah, just whatever you can find. 
sometimes some games are easier to find information about than other games. Some of the older games, especially, sometimes it's really tough to find good information on them. Uh, yeah. Because, like, ba back then, games were, like, maybe 30 people were making it, maybe even less. Oh, yeah. Uh, even... Sometimes it's just, like, one person. One person. And it's just, like, yeah. <laughs> the credit is just that guy's name. Honestly, over it's crazy how many <laughs> video much. games, like, one or two people, like, will make all by themselves. Mm -hmm. The music, the graphics, the story. The character is like all, everything. It's like a one person show or two person show. Dude, or and, whatever. and the funny thing is, like looking, like knowing that is that back in the day, you might as well. Uh, they were all basically indie level games, mm -hmm. and now indie levels, you know, they're small and stuff. But sometimes they get like big recognitions. But now you look at these like big conglomerate games and stuff like that, and the massive team that goes behind that, but. You know, it's funny that like Call of Duty's still gonna get beaten out by some indie game once a year, <laughs> like kind of thing. It's like, oh, everybody's talking about Among Us, not Call of Duty, and, and exactly. yeah, or yeah. um, yeah, Hades. That was a good one. Oh yeah, that was. Still a haven't played that. Like, Dude, I haven't even looked at so videos good. yet. Yeah. It's good. Mm -hmm. It's hard. It's really hard. <laughs> Have you ever played a rogue like game? Mm -mm. Uh, Eric, do you want to explain that? <laughs> <laughs> so, do you remember the game Rogue? It came out in the 1980s. <laughs> I, I feel like if you show me a, a screenshot, I'll, I'll probably remember, but I don't think I've played it. Okay, so Rogue was an ASCII game. Like, have you ever played an ASCII game? What's an ASCII game? Uh, so, think of like the characters on a, a, a keyboard. Mm -hmm. uh, an ASCII game, like, those are the only graphics it uses, are just those individual type letters so like your hero symbol might be like the at sign oh okay and then you know you use the characters to draw walls and then you use the letters of the alphabet to define like enemies like g might be a goblin so or something super basic like not graphics really. so yeah like really minimalist graphics uh so yeah rogue was an ascii game that uh basically you had one life and the dungeons built themselves so they were they were it was it was like an algorithm that would come in build the dungeons you know decide what items and enemies were there and you would have to you know, uh, transverse to the bottom of the dungeon um and so a lot of those features that came about in that game uh people will refer to those as roguelike so anytime you have like a dungeon that like kind of assembles as it's going mm. um you know, if you only have like one life for your character, if it's an RPG, if it's turn based, stuff like that, those are kind of the characteristics of Rogue. Okay. But it's really and, hard. Once and, you die, you start all the way yeah. back from the very beginning. There's no like save Same. point. And so you basically have to build up your skill as you're playing because every time you die, you kind of get better. Yeah. <laughs> and it, you can build up your like strength and stuff like that. But yeah, it took me a really long time to even play through the game. So to get to the end, but then even that's not the real end because every time you beat it, there's more of the story that's told. Oh wow! It, but yeah, it's really hard, but it's so, really fun. So it's random every single time. Yeah, so it's different every time. Yeah, so, so the skills like, uh, you plan. have access to will be different. The enemies you'll fight will be different. Wow! The weapon you can start with can be different. Like you can change. There's so much different about each playthrough that it feels like yeah, you're playing a, a new game again. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm sold. I got very, <laughs> I got very frustrated with it because I never played a game like that before. Mm -hmm. Which is one reason that we started to do this podcast mm -hmm. is so because cut like the shtick is I'm kind of like the newbie gamer. Mm -hmm. Like my first console was the Wii, so okay. uh, not like new new gamer. But yeah, yeah. Like I'm not as experienced as Eric, who's been basically playing video games since he was born <laughs> <laughs> that's, true. that's true and like it's cool to like have the perspective of like someone who doesn't know all the things already no, yeah. versus someone who knows a lot about everything no so. I, I i agree uh I, I there's definitely that market where uh people want to hear non-gamers talk about games because like uh, it makes the gamers like, oh man, you're 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 enjoying something that I like, mm -hmm. and and or you're getting into the fandom that I like, and it's fun hearing somebody talk about it where they don't know how to articulate it, but you could see the emotion, the expression. Yeah. So I I think it's really cool. So uh, part of that is just like we try to pick games that we haven't played before. Like Eric will try to pick a game he might think that I'll like or. 
like vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm getting to play like, all these different genres of games that I didn't even know existed. Um, it's really cool because like before my knowledge was pretty much like Mario, you know, yeah. <laughs> like which, what everybody, yeah. Mario, Mario Kart, Tetris, those kind of games that like yeah. everybody's played. Yeah, it's honestly just fun to get to play a new game every couple of weeks. Too. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I think that's really cool because uh, I, I know for me, I would, if I was with somebody to do that same format, I would want them I, at first I would give them all the games that I love <laughs> and then it's like okay I want to get you uh experience in this and then we'll move on to like games that we both haven't played yeah in a way but uh, I know it's crazy like Eric's like you know since we very first started dating you know like almost 10 years ago at this point you know his congrats. favorite game has always been Mega Man like he even has a Mega Man tattoo and that's the only tattoo he has mm. And he hasn't picked any Mega Man games yet. Nice. <laughs> yeah, and he hasn't picked any Mega Man games yet. I'm like, every week, I'm like... <laughs> you know, you know, it's coming. <laughs> okay. I did try to play Mega Man before we started doing this podcast, and it's hard. <laughs> no, it's it's tough because, like, there's so many games I want to play. Like, even just new games I might want to play. Like, I, you know, and... Really, I try to switch it up so it's like a different genre of game each week. So yeah. we're not like we're not just doing two D platformers yeah. every week. Yeah, we try to mix it up like new games, old games, different genres. Yeah, because you know, I mean, with within those genres, you can basically never move on to any genres just because there's so many. Don't even get me started on FPS. Like you'll just never move on to any of them if you're just like, oh, you got to play. Like all the really good FPSs and stuff. Oh, you have to play all the really good stealth games. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Plus, that would get kind of boring too, just playing like the same yeah. like, genre game over and over. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100%. <laughs> yeah. And then we'll have guests who want to, uh, we'll let them pick out a game too that they mm -hmm. like. So it's not just our games. That's, that's actually, cool. that's how we got to Metal Gear Solid 2, was our uh, friend Mark was like a huge fan of the game. And he wanted to bring that game on and talk about it because otherwise I might not have picked it. I played it a long time ago. Oh, I never but... would have picked. I didn't even know. About oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's funny what uh, what the guests might bring. Uh, like recently, we had our friend Eric Stetson on, and he brought Mist, which I played that game for about five minutes as a kid, and I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like an old computer game. There's no directions, like. You're, yeah. you're wandering around this island trying to figure out what the hell to do. <laughs> and yeah, it's it's super frustrating, especially <laughs> at the beginning when you have no idea. <laughs> because yeah. it, it introduces like five or six puzzles right off the bat and it doesn't... Like, Tell you what order to go in. Yeah, or there's, anything. there's no it's clues to any like, of them until you discover one clue that gives you like a bunch of other clues. So yeah, until you discover that one thing, like yeah, you're just walking in circles, like clicking on levers and hitting buttons, and nothing's happening. <laughs> that reminds me of the game almost uh, uh, Witness. You guys heard of that? Oh, I've heard of that. Yeah. Yeah, it's at first it's fun, like it's a puzzle game. At first it's fun, <laughs> and like your the puzzles are simple. It's pretty linear. Like they're getting you introduced to the mechanics of the world, and then the moment the world is open to you, it's it's like, okay, I, I don't need hand-holding, but uh, uh, Breath of the Wild did it perfect where it's like they introduced you to the mechanics of the game. Then when you were out in the real world, it was like, okay, now do an adventure. There's nothing wrong besides dying. Yeah. But this game, Witness, it was just like puzzles, but some of the puzzles were ranged from like super easy to super obscure and like that. Like I remember until you find a clue for one random spot, <laughs> then you can go to the other side of the map and now solve that other puzzle you were stuck on. Yeah, it's like once you find one, it starts to click, but, yeah. then, but they don't tell you how to find that one, so you're just mm. like, what the heck? Yeah, <laughs> and, and then sometimes they're just too obscure. It's like, oh, you gotta think outside the box. I'm like yeah. <laughs> in another state away from the box. I don't even know. <laughs> and another thing for our podcast is like, we do challenges, so like mm -hmm. if I pick the game, I have a challenge for Eric to try to complete like within the two weeks or whatever we have, uh, you know, until we record that podcast. And for that episode, um, one of the the challenge was to like beat the game without using the internet or something like that, right? Missed, yeah. So it was like we <laughs> no couldn't references. even look up like a clue or anything online. So we ended up failing the challenge because we eventually were like, F it. <laughs> Let's Google this thing. Cause we were just like 
Hey, we didn't know what else to do. We were just wandering around. We kept track of the times we used it. Like, we cheated Maybe. three times. I think. <laughs> but that's the thing. If you fill the challenge, that's when you have to rap. And yeah. so, like, that's another fun thing about our podcast is we, we do a lot of video game raps. And so, eh, if you fill, sometimes you just have to rap. Yeah, and that's yeah. rapping's kind of fun. Yeah, that's pretty fun. Yeah, that's that's dope. Yeah, I like that. Like the old challenge, especially if you like if you played a game where you're really good at, it, and you played it so many times that you know at the back of your hand, you kind of need a challenge. Exactly. And it's funny if if somebody introduces a challenge that uh, like they don't know the game, but they tell you, okay, throughout this game you can't jump, and then you're just like. <sighs> Wow, I never realized how important jumping is. <laughs> oh, that'd be a hard challenge. We haven't done anything that hard, but like, yeah, uh, it was like the last one we did was Road Rash, which is like this old early '90s motorcycle racing game. Yeah, yeah. Road Rash. And so, like, your challenge for me was actually a four parter. It was like beat a race, steal someone's club, <laughs> and then knock them off the motorcycle, and knock them off the motorcycle. Uh. Upgrade my motorcycle to like a panda something. A or panda six hundred. And then was the oh, and then just like get to the next level. Yeah, get to the next level. Yeah. That's but yeah, I... sometimes it's like beat the game. Like right now, uh, for like the next episode, the the challenge is beat the game. Yeah. So like that's pretty straightforward. But yeah, sometimes it's different. <laughs> so getting into it, what is? It's going to already be hard downhill from here, though. <laughs> what is your guys' favorite video game of all time? And if you can answer that, at least give me, like, what is one of your, like, top five? Like, this is the state. It so, doesn't have to be in any order, but, like, So we were talking order? about this, actually, <laughs> the other day, because Eric, for some reason, Eric was, like, all, like, what's he going to ask us? <laughs> what do I need to be prepared for? Well, see, that's the, that's the best part. It's like, no, like, it has to be authentic. It has to be I real. Know. And I'm like, well, the only thing he said was like, what's your favorite video game of all time? <laughs> it was like one of the examples. Yeah. That Maybe like, like three. I don't know. Yeah, He's that's like, a really hard have, question. Have, have oh, ask, yeah. Like, See, that's why I got to start with the hard one first. That's why I made a list. <laughs> <laughs> I can yes. Probably, I can go first. I think like one of my vi- favorite video games of all time is probably Ark of Night. Yeah, um, that's a good one. It's a kind of newer ish one. I was not expecting that in respect because of my main man Batman. All right. I mean, I love Batman. And like, this is already my favorite episode. Oh, All right, cool. It's awesome. <laughs> well, I love the game because you've got you've got puzzles, you've got fighting, you've got flying, you've got. It's gliding. Um, what? It's pretty much flying. <laughs> whatever. Gliding, flying, whatever. Especially when you upgrade that shit all the way. Yeah. Like, I don't use. Any, I don't even use the bat. I use the Batmobile just to launch myself, and then I'm fucking. Flying. And then, and then you have the Batmobile, which is like the cool one of the coolest parts of the whole game. So I think, as far as like a real well rounded game goes, mm-hmm. like that's a really really good one. Wow. Like also, just like my go to lifetime favorite game, probably Tetris. Because really? that's like that's like Classic. the first game. That I really played as a kid. I didn't mm-hmm. get to play a lot of video games, but that was one that I actually did play a lot. So, were you good at it? Yeah, pretty good at it. Yeah. I'm like, she goes pretty far in Tetris 99. I was gonna say that. Like, <laughs> yeah. have you ever won in Tetris 99? I don't think I've won. I think like third place. <laughs> I, I'm third really place, gotten. still. That's amazing. Yeah, I've gotten second or third, but man, that's no, so hard. I've never gotten uh, in the tenth digit. It depends 10. on. What group? I don't know. It depends on who you're grouped with, obviously. Like, sometimes I get on there. I've gone out, like, 80-something place. Because <laughs> just ever some of the people, like, sometimes you get people in there, and they're really, really good at Tetris, yeah. and they clearly play this game all the time. But, yeah, sometimes you get a little more casual of groups, so yeah. it kind of depends. I Man, I've never been paired with that group, which is so <laughs> good. <laughs> they're so good. Yeah, there always seems to be at least, like, a few really, really good people. Okay, I'll let you go, Eric, since you have, like, a whole list. I have. I narrowed it down to 14 genres. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I love it. Uh, So, 2D platformer. Man, this was a tough one. It was... uh, platformer, yeah. I I, I went with Cave Story. Like, have you ever played Cave Story? I, I think I've heard of it, yeah. But I've never played it. Uh, It takes a lot of the really good elements of, like, Mega Man and Metroid and puts it together with a nice story. It's uh, it's really kind of solid all around. It, it's it's fairly recent, right? Uh, two thousand five, I think is okay. when it came out. Okay, never mind. Uh, 
But I, I still think I know what you're talking about. Uh, but I was thinking it was like 2000, somewhere uh, 2000, between 2010 and 2020. There have been remakes of it. Like, um, oh, okay. So the initial one came out for the PC as freeware, and then it was remade like a number of times. One for like the DS and uh, for the Wii and for the Switch. Okay. So yeah, we're playing the plus version on the Switch right now. That's probably what I saw recently. Okay, so PD <laughs> platformer, Mario 64, uh, RTS, StarCraft, Strategy, Advanced Wars, Dual Strike, RPG, Undertale, JRPG, Final Fantasy VII. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't want you to know. <laughs> um, Adventure, uh, Zelda Ocarina of Time. Yay! Uh, Sandbox, GTA Vice City. Nice. Uh, single player shooter, Bioshock Infinite. Oh, nice. Uh, Bioshock multiplayer Infinite. shooter, Overwatch. <laughs> Puzzle, Dr. Mario. Party game, Mario Mario Kart 64. Hey. Uh, sports, Rocket League, and Horror Resident Evil 4. Hey, Jeez. all right. Th that's, that's some good ones. You're so ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised with sports, Rocket League. Dude, like, listen, I've seen videos where people are, like, really good at that game. Yeah. You're either, like, really good or you're trash i am trash and it I, takes a while to get good i would say everything you do looks looks way worse in slow motion when they're showing the replays <laughs> they'll show the replay of your car like doing some like stupid little flip or something that's like nowhere near the ball and like super slow motion as it goes in over your head yeah it's just like there's no way to look really good unless you're the one doing the cool shot or something i <laughs> that's so true i I, I was talking about this with my friends when like it, it, it came out and it was trending. I said I would be that guy in the boardroom meeting while they're pitching this game to say <laughs> this is the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> There's no way this game is gonna take off. And I would leave. They'd be like, all right, then leave. I'd be like, I'm gonna work on like some other game. Well, you need to listen to our episode about Rocket League because that's pretty much what happened. Yeah, they got well, they got they pitched it and their uh, the executives are like, no, this is trash. <laughs> Yeah, and okay, then it, now and I got then it. Took off like yeah. it, which is fine because like a lot of the games we do cover on our podcast, it's like people think they're going to be not successful, and then they blow up. Yeah, yeah. so no. you can't always tell what people are going to like. It, you're so right. <laughs> I I hear that. It's just like, and and when the team starts like going like, ha ha, you 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 could have been with the team and made this game and all that stuff. I would have been like, it's not that successful. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I would have been salty all the way. Yeah. Uh, my favorite game uh, of all time, like, it, super mainstream. I don't care, but like, uh, I I can't just pick one, but uh, but if I had to, I'm wearing the shirt. Is Zelda Majora's Mask? Oh yeah, that's uh, if I had to pick it, this game. Uh, was the first game I've beaten without a guidebook, uh, and it took me two years. Wow. And dude, it was hard, especially at the yeah. very beginning. Oh, man. Yeah, right. dude, I I eventually got a guidebook, but what was so great, though, is I was able to beat it 100% without a guidebook. I got all the nice. hard pieces, all the items, and and I, I just remember, because uh, growing up, uh, my, parent, my parents barely bought us games, but... And my first system was an N64. I had Ocarina of Time, and I I played that. I beaten that, uh, not one hundred percent. But then when I got Majora's Mask, I just I fell in love with it. It was so challenging. Uh, 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 everything is there. Like you had to actually pay attention to in the game to find out where everything is. And I don't know, I, like uh, Miyamoto, how when he made the first uh, Legend of Zelda, that feeling he got when he was exploring caves. Uh, I got that feeling with Majora's Mask. Like it was honestly a cave. It was an adventure. So if I had to pick, if I had to pick one, it's definitely that. But then like a quick top five would be uh, Majora's Mask, Final Fantasy VII, Metal Gear Solid Three, uh, the Batman games. I can't necessarily pick one. If I had to, <laughs> probably Arkham, uh, Arkham City, Arkham Knight was dope. I'm not knocking Arkham Knight, uh, but. I think the re one of the reasons why I pick Arkham City over Arkham Knight is only because, uh, spoiler alert for those, <laughs> like, you're late anyways, it's with the Joker dying uh, at the okay. end. It was, like, because I felt it 
Like, you know how if you, uh, after Arkham City, like, you still hear the goons talking like, no way, no way Joker's dead. This I actually dead. haven't played Ar- uh, any of the other Oh, <laughs> mother- <laughs> uh, why did you, so why did you stop why me? Arkham Knight's my favorite <laughs> one. Uh, well, I mean, you, you know that he's dead. Yeah, yeah, we know. We well, already yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not worried about Arkham spoilers. Uh, yeah. it's, it's a good part of religion. I don't want to spoil <laughs> shit, but anyways. <laughs> Yeah, so he dies at the end of Arkham City, and what's cool about it, like, when you're uh, uh, still playing it, like, after his death, you hear the goons talking, uh, like, no way, the Joker's dead, this is some kind of gag, and all that stuff, and I lit as a player, I felt that, I was mm-hmm. just like, and I love when I'm really immersed in the game, where I actually feel for other characters, yeah. ins- instead of the main character, and I was like, yeah, I'm a huge Batman fan, and I'm like, there's no way, there's no <laughs> fucking way he's dead, no. And so, uh, yeah, uh, Arkham City over Arkham Knight. But not saying that Arkham Knight's trash. It's like, by hair. Yeah. Yeah, they're both really good games. I just, I haven't played, like, you know, all the games. So it's like... (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, no worries. Um, You like what you like. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, I remember, like, my first game that I actually, like, played through... Um, and beat it, you know, like the whole story was like God of War, uh, like the first one, I think, nice. on PlayStation 3 or yeah, whatever. That's a good one. Um, and oh, dude, that game was so good. <laughs> <laughs> like, God of War is definitely one of my favorite franchises, yeah. like with Tomb Raider and, um, you know, probably the Batman ones when I play some of the other ones, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I love games like those adventure games. That's mm-hmm. probably like my one of my favorite genres where you got, where you get a mix of everything, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh well, yeah, the Uncharted series too. Yeah, Uncharted. Yeah, I played Uncharted four. I think they're about to come out with a new one. You're coming out with that movie. Meh. <laughs> 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 I don't know, anything with Mark Wahlberg in it, I'm just like You like Mark Wahlberg? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> I like uh the Tom other guys Tom or whatever, it, uh, the one with Will Ferrell where they're like cops. Oh, oh, I like uh, that the movie. other guys. Yeah, I like yeah. that one. <laughs> Some of his other ones are okay, but I think I'm just kind of over him. I don't know. <laughs> are you? Do you? Are you excited about the movie? Sorry. No. Like, if you like Marvel. Marvel no, Marvel, I mean Marvel. I like Marvel. <laughs> Marvel. Uh, uh, fun fact: When I worked at a uh, Bone Steakhouse in Atlanta, uh, he came into the restaurant. It was so cool. Like uh, we had a private room, and he came in downstairs and uh we were having a pre-dinner meeting and he he turned to us and it was like hey guys sorry to interrupt uh i just heard like this was like the best steakhouse so like no pressure and we were all geeking out like oh yeah. and then he went <laughs> into the room and then we're like oh shit martin Wahlberg's here so he walked in on like your server meeting well like he had a reservation server? like oh, okay. they, uh, uh, a lot of times uh like big celebrities yeah uh, so we'll open our doors uh or like we'll let people into the dining room literally at like five thirty, but we let him in at five, uh, gotcha. just to avoid some people yeah, and to yeah, go yeah. into the room. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> and so it was, it was it was pretty dope. Like I mean I like Mark Wahlberg. He's not like my favorite actor, but I, I like him. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, I guess maybe I'll like the whole making movies from video games thing. Yeah, doesn't work out too well. Yeah, that's true. Um, no, I did no. like all the Resident Evil games. But also, I've never played any of those games. Or I liked all those movies, but I've never played any of those video games. Yeah, yeah. The games so like, really I remember making Eric watch all the Resident Evil movies because I liked <laughs> them, and he's like, "This, who is this chick?" Yeah, she's, yeah. Not like, she's not in the game. No. She's the main character. She's not no. even in the game. I had no idea. So I'm like, I'm, if you played those games, you might not like the movies. But I really like, felt like they just like wanted to make their own horror movie, and then they slapped <laughs> Resident Evil on it because they knew it would get a bigger audience. One hundred percent. But yeah. those movies ended up being kind of good in their own right. Like if you don't worry about the the, the game or anything thing like that, and just want to see like a cool like zombie action. Movie. Yeah, like it, and it's it's kind of good in the sense where like. Uh, you know, if you're if you don't have high expectations, uh, <laughs> yeah, mine were, were around the floor. Oh, yeah. They were super low. I try to do that with every movie though. <laughs> like I Lower just feel let down too many times. <laughs> yeah, it's like oh, uh, there was one Resident Evil game. It was when Resident Evil Five came out. Like so, I'm a I'm you know I'm a martial artist and I love fight scenes. I love martial art movies, and I can like memorize choreography. In one of the Resident Evil movies, they 100% ripped off from the fifth game fight scene with uh, 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 Wesker. And I was just like, 
did anybody else catch that? Like, <laughs> like why didn't you just make your own fight scene? Like, why'd you have to, like, re- even though it's Resident Evil, it's under the same umbrella, ha yeah. ha pun, but, like, still. Oh, no, that's funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't know they did that. Yeah. So I, like, caught that. I enjoyed Resident Evil 5. Like, Resident Evil 4 is, yes, the best, but I enjoyed Resident Evil 5. It was the first one where you got to do co op. Yeah. So I, I enjoyed that. That element was cool, but, I, man, like, as far as the horror, I felt like... Oh, just, no, laugh. Yeah, as soon as they, like, had, like, zombies riding motorcycles, I'm like, all right, this is... <laughs> this is just isn't very scary. I don't yeah. know what it is. Yeah, no, 100%. Yeah. It's like, how brain dead can you be if you can operate a motorcycle? <laughs> <laughs> and guns, too. Like, like later on, they, they, yeah. they had guns and it's they like, shot at you. <laughs> no, yeah, the horror... El- and then that, they tried to bring it back with six, but then six was a flop. <laughs> And then I haven't played seven or eight, uh, just because it's too scary for me. Oh. Yeah. Like, I am a wuss. I played. I played the Eric remake like for two. Games either. No, I actually like horror games. All right. Okay. I don't like horror <laughs> movies. Yeah. No. I'm. I'm. I'm both. I don't like horror movies or horror games, but sometimes I'll watch a horror game. I won't play it. I'll play it, like, but I first gotta watch you play it, and I gotta hide behind my pillow so a little bit. So you can gauge just how scary it really is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I like, uh, Until Dawn, if you guys know about Until Dawn. Yeah, I haven't played it, but I, I haven't have played it. it yeah, no, uh, I played it, but I had to watch somebody play it first, just so I, like, kind of knew, like, a little bit of spoiler. If you spoil something horror for me, I'm more inclined to, like, watch it slash play it. Yeah. But, no, I'm not about that life. I've definitely <laughs> had nightmares after playing some of the horror games, for sure. Yeah. Um, It's not an appeal to me. It's like, oh, man, this is super scary. Oh, thanks, I'm gonna stay away from it. Yeah. What was the, uh, like what was the one game? The walking simulator? The hall simulator? The walk, the, oh, um, the layers of fear? Yeah, layers of fear. Oh. Oh, man, yeah. that's, that's pretty good. It's not that scary. It's more of a psychological thriller than, like, jump scare, or, like, blood or anything like that. Oh. Uh, layers of fear? I thought it was pretty jump scary. Oh. Yeah, no, screw that. Well, I don't know. I, I watch a lot more scary movies. <laughs> <than those. laughs> you were me into it. Those, yeah, right, I don't yeah. get scared that easily. Whatever. <laughs> All right. Kind so of mo- tough guy. Well, you know. Yeah, no. I, I'll, I like to think I'm tough. No, no, I, I won't flex on that. No, no. Uh, so, best story. Which game do you think has like some of the best stories? Oh, uh, I think uh, like Bioshock Infinite. Mm-hmm. Have you played that one? I played it. haven't finished it. <sighs> It has a really good story. Yeah, it has a really good ending, too. I love that ending so yeah. much. It's okay. one of my favorite endings in, like, any video game I've ever played. Really? So yeah, I probably don't want to like spoil if you ending. still haven't finished it. Uh, yeah. Don't, 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 <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't do that. Well, no, I didn't, I didn't hear any spoilers, so. <laughs> well, I didn't really say. I said there's kind of a twist at the end. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's not really uh, no, that's giving not spoiler. anything away. And then, yeah. If anything, I expect that. <laughs> I, I would say, like, kind of add, as an adolescent, like, one of the first stories in a video game that really spoke to me was final fantasy 7 and it was like one of the first ones where it kind of felt like it didn't treat me like a kid mm-hmm. you know you had uh they were lost there was profanity you know yeah and a uh, huge spoiler alert yeah when your <laughs> when your party members actually dies oh, no. which was like i wonder I, who <laughs> i'd never seen that in a video game before like it, it did it blew my mind that like they, they were willing to do that and yeah, just like from from yeah, as an adolescent, it just was like man, mind blowing. <laughs> yeah, uh, that that game, man. Like I, I I'm one hundred percent with you on that. Uh, that game, even when I finished it, I didn't feel like I won in a way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it just felt like okay, we just stopped something bad, but damn, did we lose a lot? Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I 100% agree with that. <laughs> but yeah, that was really the first story in a game that I really just connected with. And I I played it on PC, actually. I know it came out for PlayStation 1. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I remember, actually, my computer was only just barely able to run it. Like, <laughs> barely. And uh, in fact, in one of the cutscenes, it would air out every time. Oh, no. So I had a, I had a friend who had it, too. And I actually had to take my save files, take it to his house, 
<laughs> just, to just to get through that. Uh, and it's a super long cut scene. And then there's a long time before you can get to a save point. So I was just trying to rush through all this stuff just so I could get back to playing it at my house. <laughs> <laughs> so it was yeah. only just that all part? Days. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. It was, it was like uh, one of the disc transitions, I think. Oh, okay. But yeah, it was, uh, it was a major pivotal point of the game. Yeah. And it was just like, yeah, every time I got to this cinematic, it would just throw an error and the game would <laughs> freeze up and I'd have to, yeah, it's, man, the old school, the old problems we used to have playing games. God. Yeah. Blowing the cartridges. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you feel about the remake of Final Fantasy VII? Uh, I have mixed feelings. I think they tried to do too much, to be I honest. Uh, I mean, it's kind of cool what they did, but... I'm like, how are they going to do the other parts of the game without recycling stuff? Or, yeah, I, it's just like I felt like they tried to do too much. In fact, I feel like they should have gone the other route and maybe minimalizing it a little bit, and just focusing on more of like what was really good about it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. No, I I agree. Uh, so if you guys don't mind, I'm just going to quickly rant a little bit <laughs> yeah. about it. So I before I started the podcast, I. I finished it like it was like during COVID too, so I had nothing to do. I I played mm -hmm. it. I beat it like within like two three days, <laughs> and uh, I was I'm a huge Final Fantasy VII fan. Like so, anyways, and uh, I was with the ending with some of the twists and stuff, the new things. It like kind of rubbed me the wrong. At first, I was like, no, hold on, let me think about this. But here's what pissed me off about it, and and I agree with you. Like they try to do too much. Here's why. Uh, because uh, Resident Evil 2 Remake came out around the same time. Like, it came out, a little, I think, a little bit before. And this is what I pictured, like, in a, in a funny sense, where uh, the meeting at Capcom, they were like, hey, uh, it's time for us to remake a game. Uh, we got Resident Evil 2 to remake. Uh, what should we, what do the fans want? And it's like, they want the same game, just with new graphics and better voice acting. All right, cool. Do we need to add anything? No, they want it that way. And then they're like, all right, so buff up graphics and better voice acting? Yeah, all right, let's do that. Then they did that. They, it got great reviews, was critically acclaimed. I think won game of the year. Uh, and it was like, all right, cool. Final Fantasy VII, it's like, hey, uh, what do the fans want? They want modern graphics, voice acting, <laughs> maybe change up the gameplay. Some people, do, the old fans are going to love the turn base, but like I think they're, they're open to having it be action. They're like, all right, cool. Do we need to change anything to the story? No. <laughs> well, I want to, and I think the fans are going to appreciate it. it. And then I saw one guy try to defend it saying, uh, the fans want to be surprised. No, they do not. They, they're already <laughs> expecting that certain character to die. They're already expecting certain losses don't change a damn thing that's why it was popular in the first place that's why people were <laughs> screaming for years for it to be a remake don't change a damn thing and then they did and it's like yeah it's like, like you had the blueprint you had the script all you had to do was do it and if you want to just write a whole new story just make the next yeah. game in the series yeah, which already like game. a million of them yeah. final <laughs> fantasy 7 too. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Like, it was Advent Children, the movie that came out, I was like, hey, they, this is a, a, basically Final Fantasy VII after the event. Like, this is part two. And some people liked it, some people didn't, but, like, no one was hurt because it was its own thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I agree with a you. A lot of it is like you were saying. It's like whatever your expectation is. <laughs> yeah. If you go in with low expectations and it sucks, then you're like, okay. Well, that's what I thought it was going to be. Yeah. yeah. And then if you have low expectations, that's really good. You're like, whoa. Yeah. I mean, like, it wasn't. Yeah, it's all about what people are expecting. It wasn't get. terrible, but it just, yeah. No. It also just kind of ended up being a little bit of a disappointment. So. Yeah. Gameplay 100% was awesome. That needed a jump button. But Tifa was like my favorite character. Fucking love Tifa. Uh, it, was a, it was a fun game. Cool story moments, like graphic wise and all that. Uh, but overall, what you're doing with the story, which is why I fell in love with it in the first place. Like I am a little bit boycotting the game. Like I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah. Because the thing is, I, I wanted to like I bought the the freaking deluxe. Like, and, <laughs> and, like I went all in, and uh, the thing is, the reason why I'm not gonna uh, continue buying the other games is because uh. 
I fell in love with the story. You're doing your own story, which is cool. You know, at this point, you do you. But uh, I've it's not the game I fell in love with. Mm-hmm. And so, like, there's no point in spending money on a, on something that is an imposter to me. Yeah. yeah. So. And plus the whole, we're going to break it into three different games. And this Episode. is just part one. And, and it was just the Midgar part. part. Yeah, just the Midgar part, which is kind of the slow part of Final Fantasy VII anyway. Exactly. And then, yeah, once you get out of Midgar, you realize that you have this whole world that you can explore, and that's just not in the game. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, where do you go from here? Because you're always supposed to be able to return to Midgar and all that stuff. And I would love to talk to, like, not even somebody on that team who worked on the game, maybe somebody in the game industry who can, like, kind of defend the episodic kind of thing. Because here's my thing. Uh, kind of like with Kingdom Hearts 3 as well, People waited for years. Like, there was memes coming out, like, oh, when's it going to happen? When's it going to happen? People are used to waiting. You might as well just wait and make it in its entirety. If you're going to split it up into parts, I was saying, like, do it like the way the PS1 did it, where it was three discs, and when that certain character passed, uh, that was end of disc one. Disc two was when um, Zephyroth was now, he gets the black materia, That was the end of this too. And then they're done. Like make it at least like that. Uh, But I'm a a proponent of fans are already waiting. You might, they can wait longer. Yeah. (laughs) We're used to waiting. Exactly. Yeah. Just make something good. (laughs) (laughs) We've been waiting for Overwatch 2 to come out for like ever now. (laughs) Uh, I don't know. I don't know about Blizzard right now. Well, I, Blizzard Activision, which was bought by who bought them? Uh, Microsoft, Microsoft, which is bought by yeah. Microsoft. Yeah, I don't <laughs> that whole thing. I, I did... changes. <laughs> it's such a power move with the uh, Sony buying Bungie too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a, like a pissing contest for these <laughs> big ass brands that don't even need to well, own anything else. Well, like, they, <laughs> I think they learned from Nintendo. Like they need good exclusives for their console. Because, you know, that's what one of the reasons Nintendo always sells. They have really good exclusives. Like, you know, you're always going to get a good Mario game, a good Zelda game. Animal Crossing. Um, yeah, Animal Crossing. They have fans. Pokemon. Um, yeah. yeah, you're always going to get a good one of those games. So. People are going to buy a Switch just for Smash. Like, they're done. Like, that would be the yeah. only game they get. But they're going to buy a console just for that. Yeah, but for, like... For the PlayStation and Xbox, like I can't really think of major franchises. So maybe like God it used of War. To be God or, of War. Yeah. Know, PlayStation. If, if you were a Halo fan, like maybe that for Xbox. Yeah. But or Gears of War, I think that was Xbox. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm not. I don't know a ton of like just franchises that were dedicated one way or the other. Um, and that's kind of. I think that's where they're trying to go. But again, I don't re- really know that they did that with those acquisitions either. Because, I mean, they're good acquisitions, but mm-hmm. uh, I guess with Blizzard, you'll always have the Diablo, StarCraft stuff. Uh, with Bungie, you'll get Halo, but... Uh, oh, and I, I think yeah. Halo's I bought by another company now. I don't oh. think it's Bungie anymore. Oh. I think. I'm not 100%. I heard somebody talk about this, because I said that. It's like, wow, PlayStation just bought Halo. And then somebody corrected me. It was like, no, uh, Halo's bought by something else. Okay. Uh, I, don't fact, <laughs> I, I, I don't, don't quote me. I, it's, it's some, somebody said that. Like, yeah. It's not a hill I'm willing to die on. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. I don't follow that company that well. So. Yeah. yeah, me either. I haven't uh, played Halo in like a million years. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't really into it like other people were. Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. Like, I, I love the LAN parties we used to do with it back in the day where you had a bunch of Xboxes, you yeah. hooked them into a Switch or, or yeah, like a your network your Switch, not a yeah. Nintendo Switch. Uh, and yeah, you, uh, you'd have a TV with uh, four, four in this room and you have a TV with the four in this room and you'd go head to head. See, I, I, I was never a part of that. Like, oh, yeah. Uh, I got to I, do like one. <laughs> and I think we even had internet. I don't know why we did it. It was like being we were being old school or something. No, I mean that's how you had to do. Well, I think with the original Halo or Halo Two, um, even before they had online mode, or I think they had online mode, but it didn't work very well. So that was the way that you did it. it was like, you just get all your friends together. Yeah, you land land. I just remember it was like the first time I had ever played Halo was at this land party. <laughs> and there was people there who played it every single day and I just was like basically dying every yeah, second like I was just like fun. died 
ran around, got shot, died, ran yeah. around, oh, got shot again. It was <laughs> like my my second introduction to FPS in a way where uh, the first one was GoldenEye, uh, but then like the next one was Halo, uh, and then people were just super skilled. Mm-hmm. I wasn't, and then I tried to play it for the story, and I just <laughs> didn't care for it. Yeah. But also, I grew up uh, with PlayStation and Nintendo. Like that was my console. My first Xbox was a 360, but I got it for Gears of War. I really enjoyed Gears of War. I uh, co-op with uh, my brothers and my friends. Um, but yeah, like. Uh, what was that one that we got into? The Star Wars? Uh, Battlefront. 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 Yeah, yeah, that was really fun. That was like our Overwatch before we switched over to Overwatch. Well, that's, <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up because that's a good segue to the next question. Best multiplayer. Yeah, best multiplayer. Yeah, I don't know. I still I think I still go back to Overwatch sometimes, man. I really enjoyed that game. I've never played Overwatch. So it was I've seen it. Like it's no It was a great yeah, it's really fun. mix between like um between FPS and strategy. Nice. Uh because yeah, building your team and how your team was organized and stuff really made a huge difference. You, you couldn't really be that successful just by yourself. You really needed the support of your teammates. Uh, and that's to me what made Overwatch so much fun was it was it was a good team shooter. Yeah, plus all their different characters. They just have like a lot of different characters to choose from, and they all have their own weapons, their own skill sets, and that kind of yeah. stuff. So you could, like you could dedicate yourself to just learning one character. Like, yeah, if you want to be boring, <laughs> <laughs> or or just tanks in general or something. Like if you just wanted to tank or something. Yeah. Or if you just want to heal, like. Yeah, or like what we would do is there was a game. Where it would just select at random which yeah. player you came in as, and then that way I just got good at all the characters because nice. like I, I didn't get the option to choose. Because I think if I have the option to choose, then I'll go towards like the yeah. one I know how to play. Yeah, but like Diva every time or something. That's what. Oh, but that was a good way to like make yourself learn all the different. Characters. I've seen YouTubers like it's mainly in fighting games where uh, if you really want to get good at fighting games, especially like in Smash, you just hit random because now you're forced to play with a character that you don't normally play. Mm-hmm. So you have to utilize their moveset. And I suck at fighting <laughs> games. They're not like my forte. Oh yeah, I'm a but... button. I'm a button masher. Yeah. <laughs> I, the only fighting game I'll do is uh, uh, Smash. I'll still talk shit. Like I'm, I'm, I'm decent, but. I'm hey, smashing good. buttons works, okay? I've won a lot of Mortal Kombat games. I try to, <laughs> like, I'm a huge buttons. Dragon Ball Z fan, and I bought the uh, recent game, the uh, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, and uh, I tried, I tried, and I was just, <laughs> I was crap. And uh, then Injustice, all with the DC stuff, I wanted to get into that so bad. Again, trash. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't do it. Yeah. yeah, I don't really like. I'm not a big fan of like Smash Brothers and stuff, just for that reason. It's like, yeah, I'm just mashing buttons, but I don't know. Yeah, I've never had much success at that game. Very good. Yeah, I got into the original one for N64, uh, pretty well, and like I would play with my friends, my brother, like. We'd have another set of friends who are also brothers. We'd play with the Muyos, and yeah, it was man, it was a blast playing that game. Yeah, I yeah, uh, Smash. I I'll play. I'll I'll continue to buy. Uh, I'm nowhere good. I'll still talk <laughs> shit. But like the uh, Injustice, Mortal Kombat kind of game. Uh, I will. No, I'm not even gonna flex those. Uh, I will never be good at them where you have to memorize the button combinations mm-hmm. and stuff yeah. like that. And I'm, yeah. I'm 100% a button masher yeah. at that with no shame. I'm like, and hey, but it works, it works. my <laughs> buddies will be like, oh man, come on, play it. Trust me, it's easy. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> uh, I remember in Mortal Kombat, like my buddy was like trying to teach me how to do a fatality and stuff and he's like all you have to do is up down left right a b <laughs> do this and all that stuff yeah. and then you have like a couple of seconds to execute it and then or else like the it's guy will die. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and i was trying so hard i was like why can't i fucking get this and i just ended up punching him and, that's it. Yeah. and you also have to stand in this specific spot to yeah, do it. yeah. I, I don't know how people do it they're like dum, 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 and they're able to input those codes i can't yeah. do it one of the cool things about Smash Brothers is, though, like, whenever we're doing, like, at the end of our podcast, like, one of the parts is we usually try to do, like, the future of the game. So if there's, like, a movie or another game in the works or something like that, we'll cover that. But, like, almost always, 
um, what I'll find is like one of the characters has been added to Smash Bros. Like, <laughs> it'll be like this guy, this character from Undertale, he's on Smash Bros. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. I feel like it's almost every game almost. It's like this character. In Smash Brothers. Yeah. It's like, and there's okay, those well, memes coming out. Yeah. Master Chief is on Smash. And then, like, uh, then they just add, like, Isabel from Animal Crossing. She's been on there for a while. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just learned about her. I'm like, <laughs> well, she's, she's not going to fight anyone. She's just doing her little announcements in the morning. Like, cool. She was on the uh, Wii U uh, Smash, I believe. Gotcha. <laughs> But yeah, it is cool how they bring all these different random like characters together. Just I know, and the like, last fight. one was Sora from Kingdom Hearts, and I was like, the hell? Like, <laughs> out of all the characters that could have possibly been, right? Like, was Sora. <laughs> I did like Banjo Kazooie's intro, like, because people wanted him for a long time, and like his trailer, they they did a little troll, like, oh, it's him, and then they were like, no, it's Duck Hunt, ha ha. Yeah. And then it was actually Banjo, it was really cool. <laughs> yeah. I was just like blown away that they. Managed to put Cloud on there. I'm like, that's not yeah. even a fucking Nintendo series. I <laughs> wait, what's Cloud? Uh, from Final Fantasy VII. Oh yeah, yeah, they have characters from everywhere. Yeah, no. When my buddy told me that when Cloud first came out, he was like, "You'll never believe who's on Smash." <laughs> and I was like, "Who?" He was like, "Cloud from Final Final Fantasy VII." I was like, you are lying to me. He's like, <laughs> and he was like, dude, honestly, I wish I was. <laughs> and then Zephroth came out, my boy, and I'm like, what? <laughs> like, okay. But he's not that great. It's funny. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, so what about you, best multiplayer? Uh, so when you say multiplayer, does that just mean, does that mean online or just like any game that a lot of people can play all at once? There, that one. Well, you we gotta say Mario Kart, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a great one. <laughs> Mario Kart, oh, and like, uh, maybe like Just Dance or something. <laughs> I think of games that we like, that are good for parties, you know, yeah. like when you have people all drinking and stuff. Yeah. So for me... I, I have to have two of multiplayer. There's that one where you're all working together and you're just having fun. And then there's one where you want to see who's the best. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so for me, it's Mario Kart. I'm <laughs> great at Mario Kart. Uh, I'm like the freaking best. I barely lose. And like... <laughs> Ooh, we gotta play. We gotta, <laughs> we gotta play. play. We gotta play. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm too cocky on it. And I've gotten to the point like... The, the the newer Mario Kart Mario Kart. Wait, age. hold on, hold on, hold on. What character do you pick to, to drive with? Uh either Toadette or Roy. Okay. That says a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going what, for what speed. That, that means you go for speed. Like, right? Well it, it depends on we do it that's why I said two. Are we doing one fifty <laughs> or two hundred CC? Ooh. Yeah, because that makes a difference too. Yeah. Uh yeah. Have you ever done? T- what's the fastest? I think I've you played do? both, but I don't really know the, like, the major. Two hundred CC is the fastest. The yeah, and so your carts are actually moving fast. Oh, yeah. gotcha. I'm pretty sure I've played both, but I don't think I've been aware of either. <laughs> <laughs> you don't pay attention to usually, the speed they put usually on. someone else is picking the like track yeah. or whatever. Two hundred CC is what separates like the men from the Ooh. boys. Like, I like, guess. Oh god. I need to go like play both so I can tell what the difference is. Then I guess. Oh, yeah, you know, if you want. Yeah, I'm like, pretty sure I played both. I just didn't pay attention yeah. to which one it was. You know. One hundred fifty CC is what like a lot of people play, but two hundred is like. It, when you really want to stress and scream <laughs> and and say like oh that's bullshit because literally it's anybody's game uh you got to be really good though you can go from first to last to back to first to finishing up in seventh place yeah and like you're all neck and that's neck. usually what happens to it's me. so good 150 <laughs> cc it's like if you're in if you're in the top you're gonna stay within the top like it's it's really hard to go from first to like last gotcha. it's, you you gotta really suck Okay, and so 200 sounds cooler. Sounds like I would have a better chance. Yeah. <laughs> at that point. Yeah, it depends on who you're playing with. Yeah, it, it definitely depends. That's why I say the two. Um, but yeah, I love Mario Kart. I got to the point where like I'm too good to the, to the point where I'm like, <laughs> all right, I'm no longer going to play Mario Kart like on my own time by myself. I have to play with people. That way... When somebody tries to use the excuse, oh, I haven't played it in a long time, and I'm like, me neither. Like, <laughs> I, I haven't played it till somebody challenges me yeah. to it. Like, during right. pandemic, that was a really fun one, because, like, now on the Switch, you know, you can all play together online. So we would just get on, like, Zoom or whatever, so we could all see each other. 
and then like you know do all the smack talking yeah. and all that yeah, I feel stuff. Like eight of us playing too. Do nice. I? Yeah, uh, I'm trying to think of who was like the best players. Playing. What did you say? There was, there was eight like eight of us. Eight of us. Oh yeah. Uh, I feel like it's all, always our friend John. Yeah, like John he was Cardinals. Never, <laughs> ever invented, basically. <laughs> Do you know the Cardinals? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and uh, I know Mike. Yeah, 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 yeah. and um, uh, I remember we we had a moment where uh, uh, he said something about Mario Kart on Facebook, and I was like, I challenge you. <laughs> and then, nice. uh, but we 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 just. Our schedule oh, didn't line up. We'll invite you next time we play. Yeah, yeah. We, we have our. Uh, they need someone to challenge them. It yeah. sounds like if you're as good as you say you Dude, are. Dude, I'm, I'm like, listen, like, I'm unknowingly good. I <laughs> and I've gotten to the point where I, I, like, I would talk to friends and I would say, like, all right, I need to stop telling people I'm good and just be like, I'm all right. Yeah. But it's so hard. I'm like, I'm not humble when it comes <laughs> to Mario humble. Kart. When it comes to Mario Kart, I'm, I'm a cocky son of a bitch. But like, uh, uh. I'm, there was this one point where I wanted to test my skills. This is how stupid I am. I told one of my friends who doesn't know shit about Mario Kart. I was like, you pick the character. You pick the cart. I'm not going to look at anything. <laughs> Just pick it and I'm going to run with it. And then I still won. Nice. And what I end up doing too is I'll start the race by being in 12th place. And then, like, I'll do, like, a five-second lead or ten-second <laughs> lead. And then I'll go and I'll still win. Dang. Give you a 10 second head start. <laughs> yeah, I'll just go. All right, let's go. <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's any game that I would be like, hands down, I'm going to beat someone at. And, uh... Everybody has their God oh, mode game. Gosh, what I was don't know. that? I don't think I have one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't think of one that I'm like, just. No, you have to have one. Like, no. oh, no, you definitely have one, Aaron, probably. Probably. I don't know. I don't know. I, I like to play different games, though. I don't like to get bogged down too much in just playing one game. Just one. I say that, and then I like I go home and play Rocket League like every fucking day <laughs> for like a couple months or two. Yeah, <laughs> you're like really obsessed with Rocket League right now. Yeah, it's, it's whatever game I'm into. Yeah. yeah, I feel like we usually always, or at least I, oh, well, I know we do. We always have one like kind of like game where it's. You play it for a while, like every night or every you for like a year. You know, it's just like an ongoing game, like Overwatch or Rocket League or something like that. Yeah, where there's not really like Call of Duty or something. Yeah, like where that. there's not really like an end to it. You yeah. know, um, and then alongside that game, you play like other games with a story and yeah. stuff like that. So and I'm always playing like two or three games at once. I'm always. Um... I can't play multiple story games. I I, I have to focus on one to like finish sense. it. Yeah, hundred percent. Mixed yeah. up, yeah. Uh, so one one thing I do like on my PS4, I'm like super lazy, <laughs> but like so, uh, I like physical copies of games, uh, but only single players. So I'll buy a single player like <laughs> physical copy, but multiplayer, I'll buy digitally. That way, like in case one of my friends hits me up and is like, "Hey, you want to play Call of Duty? Play zombies." I can just easily switch over without uh, like going in and putting the CD in. Yeah. I'm upset. I'm like, I don't want any physical games whatsoever. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah, they just. I mean, no offense. They just take up space. So, like, I don't end up using. I like looking at them. I'm yeah, like, like it. I just I don't end up using the discs, and mm -hmm. like I'm kind of lazy too. <laughs> so no, one like, like I can I can fully admit that <laughs> digital is the way to go. I, I just like the nostalgia. But, yeah, I know people, they like to have the case, the packaging, and like the booklet that comes in mm -hmm. it and all that stuff. So yeah, totally Final Fantasy VII Remake, you could have gotten it like I think two days early digitally, but I was like, no, I don't want the physical <laughs> copy. Yeah, so, I, I like wait. both. I like for the older games, I definitely like the physical copies. Yeah. But for the newer ones, I'm just like, uh, download it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's true. I mean, I get like for um, you know Nintendo sixty four or like Super Nintendo those kinds of things. Yeah, having it uh, so you can actually play it on the console. It's intended to be played on instead yeah. of just playing everything on the Switch or whatever. I'm a little bit <laughs> but, of the yeah. opposite in the sense where I have to own the old games digitally. Just one because of access, and two just because I'm scared that if I do own it and it, the cartridge is messed up, and I'm like, oh fuck, I uh, can't play it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> If you buy it from a reputable like place, they'll usually test it though. Yeah. That way, you know, they're not like buying you a game that's gonna put there. They're selling you a game that's gonna put there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have to. Yeah, eBay's iffy. Yeah, there's um there's a place in Kennesaw called Still Collectibles though. 
Yeah. That place is awesome, and they test all their stuff before they sell it. So yeah, I go to the bar of Matthews, like right next to it. Like mm -hmm. yeah, I've been there. Um, an underrated multiplayer slash single player, uh, Conquer's Bad Fur Day on the N sixty four. Have you guys ever played oh, that? Yeah, yeah, that was man, that was a good party day Dude, back in the day. Yes, <laughs> dude, and I'm so mad because I owned it. Like okay, so uh, second uh, second hand Charles uh, mm -hmm. uh, down in Barrett. There was one uh, copy of it, and it was one hundred and eight dollars. What? Yeah. <laughs> Dang. And I bought it. <laughs> and I like played the shit out of it. I invited friends over. I'm like, let's let's throw back, let's play it. And then I don't know where it is. Oh, oh no. no! And I, and I take care of my stuff. Like I'm I'm yeah. really organized. And I think I let like somebody borrow it or something, or I oh. brought it to somebody's house. And I totally oh, forgot. And maybe I drank too much and I just forgot it. And oh, I'm like no. so mad. I'm like, dude, I spent $108 on this game and I wanted it for so long. And I'm just like, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I bought Eric a game for Christmas and it was like $200. Yeah. <laughs> and I left the price tag on it. I was like, <laughs> this is a reminder. If you're thinking about giving some games away to Goodwill or something, not this one. <laughs> What was it, Ogre Battle? Yeah, Ogre uh, Battle. For yeah, which is kind of hard to find. So like, I kept that sticker. I was like, this is a $200 game. Don't give it. This, is, this stays here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good game, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was that one? Um, Super Nintendo. Super Nintendo, yeah. Yeah. Uh, going, going back to party games, though, like one of the things we would do in college is. Uh, We'd play uh, Guitar Hero for shots. God, I miss oh, Guitar Hero. Yeah. So, you know, it was, and, it was um, awesome. So you, and Rock Band. Like, both yeah, of those yeah. Yeah. For So parties. you put it, like, on expert level, and you'd do, like, a head-to-head. -head. And, man, those were so... They were, like... It was intense, too, because, you know, you didn't want to be that guy that, that, uh, to <laughs> take, take the shot. <laughs> and it was always fun to challenge someone. Yeah, challenge you for a shot. <laughs> and, yeah, I don't know. That was a great party game. Dude, that's, that's dope. Man, I, I miss that, like, oh, um... You remember Sean from Old Charlie's? Uh, uh, now he, uh, uh, big dude. Um, he was a cook. Maybe I'm not sure. <laughs> um, he uh, uh, like he he's he is an eBay vendor. Like he sells stuff now. Like he has his own little small business, and he like scores some guitar uh hero games and the guitar controllers. Nice. And I was so tempted to like message him and be like, "Hey man, listen, like, can you just hold this for me to my next paycheck? And I'll buy it." But then like, he posted it, and it just sold really quickly. And I was like, he posted it on his Instagram, and I was like, "Son of a bitch! Like, I, I want one so bad now." We need, you know, we need more new games that have stupid gimmicks like a good. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't. We yeah, do. Have yes, we do. <laughs> I used to have. There was one called DJ Hero, and it DJ came with like Hero. a little. <laughs> A little like record spin <laughs> thing, you like grr, grr. <laughs> was it good? I was I was, was always curious. I, I never I never got it. It but... was equally as good as you know guitar hero. I've never it was, like, played almost it. the same, but yeah, it was yeah. almost the same. You had the three buttons, and then every now and then you'd have to like screech it or like whatever. It was pretty fun. <laughs> I want it. I want to, I want to try it. I've never I've never tested. I wonder it. how much it would be to buy now because that was uh, I'm too scared a to look it up. But I pro like as I'm editing this episode, I will. Like, as you mentioned that, I'm going to be like, you know what? As I'm editing, let me go ahead and look it up. Oh, fuck that. All right. <laughs> I know, right? Ugh. Look it up. It's going to be like $100 for the little DJ thing. And, like... and then another 100 <laughs> for the actual game. Yeah. Well, you never know. Sometimes it's like practically worthless. Like, we looked up the uh, what karaoke games, the um, oh, Sing Star. Star. It's like you could buy like all three games and the microphone for like 20 bucks or something. <laughs> Yeah, that was one where you like it was like karaoke battle game. Yeah, yeah. And it would judge you like if you hit the notes or whatever. <laughs> I'm so bad. It's so fun, but I was, I'm so bad. At that oh game. yeah, yeah. Like at the restaurant, like uh uh when they'll be like, Oh, can you sing happy birthday? I'm like, trust me, I'm doing you a favor. You don't want me to sing. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, that's not happening. <laughs> um another uh, uh party multiplayer, like I like with teamwork so like uh, i really like uh call of duty zombies oh yeah uh, yeah those, those are great games yeah like and and it's funny because like i get the online community is bigger in like you know the free-for-all and, and and team deathmatch 
but I love the zombie community. Like that's you, you're just working with your friends. You're still shit talking of like, <laughs> oh, do you really go down in round ten? Like, <laughs> and oh, I got the you know the ray gun and stuff. Uh, I killed more zombies than you, but you're still working together. But you still have that little competition mm-hmm. amongst yeah. yourselves. So Call of Duty Zombies is definitely another top. So it's like Mario Kart Zombies. I I, I love it. Uh, especially the newest zombies, like I freaking love that. Yeah, I always played with people who knew more than I did, so I was just always following their lead. So like, I have no idea what to do or where to go, <laughs> oh, but you seem to have a good idea, so I'll just follow you. <laughs> oh yeah, no, zombies was is definitely my shit. I love it. I always love it. Um, all right, worst game. Oh god, the first one that comes to my head. <laughs> Is Home Alone 2. <laughs> I, I made you play that game. Yeah, we did that for an episode. Oh, it is... <laughs> the for, Well, first of all, like, half the button, half of the mechanics don't even work. Like, you'll go to jump, and you'll hit the button, and then you just don't do anything. And, oh, man, it's just so... I think they threw that thing together in, like, two weeks, just so yeah. they don't have something to it, come out with the mm-hmm. movie. It was one of those games, too, like, as a kid, like, I didn't know any better like i was a huge fan of home alone just the whole concept i was like oh this is like the best thing that could ever happen to you as a child <laughs> being stuck at home and setting up a, a, a bunch of booby traps and stuff and so like as a kid like i had pictured in my mind how this game would work you would be that kid you'd be setting up the booby traps and stuff like that and then i remember yeah i, I paid 60 dollars for it i think an allowance money or something and I got it home, and that was a lot of money to me. Like, yeah, that was a huge amount. That's a lot of money. That's how much they cost now. Yeah, the video games are still sixty dollars. Yeah, and I played it, and I was just like, "This is it's just a really bad like platformer." Like, and, and, and as a kid, you don't have a big standard to yeah, the no. games, so like, it had to suck yeah. to be like, "Yo, I'm a five year old, and this is not holding up." You're pretty up. much you're just running around the hotel. Like and fi- and like, kind of fighting like the bellhop and all that stuff. No, you're but, you're fighting like objects that have come to life. Well, them like, too. Yeah, like vacuum cleaner, like a jumping mop, just like random <laughs> shit. Yeah, like alarm clock. Like <laughs> some like grandma that's like waving her umbrella, jumping around. <laughs> yeah, it's so bad. I think my challenge for that game was like just beat level one, <laughs> yeah. and it took me. Oh man, it took me so long because. There's just no forgiveness. You die, like, so fast. Like, yeah. Here's a challenge. Play a really crappy game without, like, saying something mean about the game. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> we got to be honest. We can be, like, out here misleading our fan base. <laughs> but, it's like, you introduce that as a challenge so they know, like, it's, you know, you want to. You're just oh, like, mm, gotcha. This game is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> just, it's freaking good. I love that fact that I can press the jump button and I still don't jump and then the enemy hits me and I die. Like, it's amazing. Yeah. I love it. I like it when we will do a game and, like, I'll hate the game and Eric will really like the game or something. Like, uh, like yeah. Metal Gear Solid 2. Mm-hmm. I did not like that game. <laughs> <laughs> it is not for me. It is way too long, way too much to read. Like, too too much. Uh, but and but Eric scenes. and Mark loved it. So, yeah, it's oh, yeah. like, it's always fun hearing, like, you know, two different opinions on a game. Especially when, when they're way different. Yeah, when Metal Gear Solid 4 came out, there was this one review that, like, I, I, I agree with it was like this has the most cutscenes of any other Metal Gear Solid game oh, and like more if, than two more than two Jesus uh, and it was like oh, I forgot what the runtime for one like the longest cutscene is I think I think it's 30 minutes to an hour somewhere around That's there a like, short film. I think <laughs> it's something huge I wouldn't put it past like that guy though. What, what's his uh, name? Hideo, Hideo yeah, I wouldn't put anything past. Yeah, him. He, he's a huge uh, movie guy, and but uh, uh, yeah, it's somewhere around there. It's like thirty minutes to an hour. There's like this long cut scene, and it's not even like the ending. Uh, it's like, <laughs> it's like some, in the middle of the yeah, game. Yeah, <laughs> it's somewhere. Anyways, uh, there was this one review. It's like you're not a Metal Gear Solid fan if you don't actually want to sit down and enjoy it. And me and my brother, we, we that was the first game where we were studying the lore. We would go on Wikipedia. We uh, 
since we couldn't play the other games, we were trying to find out the other story. We would watch the stories uh, on YouTube and be like, oh, so this happened. Oh, so this character met that character. It is a confusing timeline. Don't get me yeah. wrong. I don't recommend it in a way, but in a way, if you can stomach it, like it's it's good. I think if you're a fan of that series, you really know what to expect. Yeah. But that being my first game I ever played, is yeah. like of that is yeah. like, and then like not really knowing like a whole lot about video games, it's like what? Yeah, it's <laughs> definitely not something like <laughs> jump in when you're a newbie, like one hundred percent. Yeah. But I'm glad I played it. Yeah. But yeah, it just and, wasn't my favorite. And honestly, like when you get towards the end of Metal Gear Solid 2, it starts going nuts. And I just yeah. wanted you to get to that part so bad. Yeah, like, that part oh, was man. probably like my favorite part. Like it did. starts going insane. <laughs> Especially when you have to fight all those rays. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. It's hard though. Like, okay, I have ADD. <laughs> it's pretty bad. So, pretty bad most of the time. So like certain games, it's just really hard for me to play because like I get overwhelmed it's like too much all at once mm -hmm. and like that one in particular you just have to read like <laughs> so much and it's just like if I want to read a book I, I do read books I will go read the book, read the book yeah. if I want to play a video game I want to actually be doing stuff like yeah. you know and that's just my preference yeah, <laughs> alright so worst game for you yeah that's Home Alone, oh, Home Alone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what was yours Almost. <laughs> That's the worst game that we've played so far, I think. Oh, um, trying to think of other regular like games that we've played that I haven't really liked, didn't really like that much. Um, hmm. I don't know. I find I can usually find good things about almost any game. I mean, I can too, but it, still, it's like for me, uh, uh, Kingdom Hearts Three. Oh yeah, yeah. It, because of the build-up, the, we waited for so long. Mm -hmm. Yes, the graphics are amazing. The soundtrack is 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 fine. But, like, the gameplay, the gameplay wasn't... I waited for so long, and the gameplay wasn't anything different than your previous games. It, it just looked better. That's it. And so, to me, uh, it was the most recent game that I played myself that I, I hated it. I was just like, dude, we waited so long for nothing. It just for better graphics. You could have easily made a better graphics game. Uh, there wasn't any Final Fantasy characters. Uh, the story was extra convoluted, and yeah, I was just like, "Wow, we waited for this. This is this is trash." So that was the worst game for me recently. I can't. I was like, when I wrote this down, immediately I thought of think, uh, Kingdom Hearts three, but I was like, "What was before Kingdom Hearts 3? And I, <laughs> It must have been so bad that I blocked it out of my mind. Yeah. Well, Dang. that's kind of an old game, right? When did that come out? Kingdom Hearts 3? Uh, 2020, I believe. Oh, uh, no, okay. For 2019. Yeah, I haven't gotten into the Kingdom Hearts series, but it's one I've heard is good, and it's one I've kind of always meant to pick up. Yeah. Uh, in a way, I don't recommend it, but at the same time... So one and two are good, though. Right? One and two are good. I don't good. know why. I was thinking Kingdom of uh, Kingdom Hearts is of Zelda, uh, uh, like a Zelda spinoff game. No, but it's I'm Final like Fantasy and Disney. Oh, yeah. uh, Final Fantasy thing. Okay. It, plus Disney. It's Yeah, it's kind plus of a weird Disney. combination. Yeah. yeah. No, the backstory to that game is, is amazing. It was uh, Disney and Final Fantasy, uh, or Square Enix, uh, they were in the same building. Uh, it was like different floors and stuff. And a Disney executive was in the elevator with a Square Enix uh, huh. guy, and they were talking about this. And they were like, I think it'd be cool. And it started literally from an elevator, That's like cool. a, a couple of minutes pitch yeah. in the elevator, like two minutes. Uh, it's a famous story. And then... That's how the ball started rolling. It's a cool backstory, but cool they had to feel the one and two are good. Uh and then everything all the uh, side games are <laughs> yeah. trash. And then uh, three okay. is trash. It always sucks when you're like waiting for something for so long and then it comes out and it wasn't worth the wait. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the dude who directed uh Kingdom Hearts, who who created uh had hand in the story, uh Tetsuo Nomura, he had he was the director for Final Fantasy Seven remake and it was him who <laughs> put all the bullshit in, and I hate. Uh -huh. So I hate that guy, Nomura. <laughs> yeah, that's that guy. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Uh, he he had a hand in creating character designs. Uh, he he was responsible for creating some characters in the Final Fantasy VII universe that he's good at. It's like he could create <laughs> cool costumes and stuff like that. That's gonna make kids wanna 
cosplay and stuff like that. He's good at that. Don't touch the fucking story. <laughs> stay in your lane, man. Stay. He's so convoluted. Like, stay. Mm, don't not like that guy. If this goes viral, I don't care. Fuck you, Namora. <laughs> Um, That'll be awesome. I personally comment. have no opinion of you. <laughs> they don't have an opinion on you. I do. I hate you. <laughs> After Final Fantasy VII Remake, I'm forgetting both. It's Square Enix fi- fired him. Anyway, <laughs> there was a tweet like after that. Like some people were like fire no more. Hashtag fire no more. Uh, I supported that, but <laughs> 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 like, I'm not gonna go out of my way. I don't care. Oh, um, uh, uh, okay, I like this one. Favorite gameplay st- slash mechanics in a game. Mm. Favorite gameplay slash mechanics. So I like. I'll go back to Bioshock Infinite. <laughs> oh man! They have yeah, this like really in this game. Yeah. They had this like rail mm-hmm. um, oh, yeah, that you can hook? jump on. Yeah, almost like a roller coaster sort of thing, and like you can glide through the city and stuff through it, which is like I haven't seen that in any other video game. It's really cool. It was a cool way to traverse. For sure. Yeah, and it really come to, came into play like at the end too. You you kind of have to stay on that thing to mm. like beat the final boss or whatever. Yeah, oh, man, that was such a good mechanic. Man, for me, I gotta go back to Mega Man. Just the whole killing a boss, getting their weapon. Man, I <laughs> love that mechanic so much as a kid. Yeah. Let me ask you this: This is you brought up Mega Man. I I love Mega Man as well. Uh, how do you feel about the Mega Man, Mega Man X, the Battle Network? And all that. Uh, I haven't played Battle Network, but the X games are solid, especially um, probably the best, some of the best Mega Man games I feel like are, are the Zero series. Like if you've ever played oh, Mega Zero, Man Zero, well, yeah. those games are really solid. Like uh, I enjoyed those quite a bit. But yeah, the the, uh, the X games are good. Um, they just take kind of take on uh, the original Mega Man and kind of make it more adult themed, I think, and yeah. kind of add on to it story wise. My first introduction to the Mega Man universe was actually Battle Network, and yeah. I really loved it. What is a Battle Network? So it was um, it was ki- like kind of card based, but not really like oh, it, okay. uh, it never transitioned to like real life like uh, trading cards or anything. But it was like battle chips, and it was like uh, so in the Mega Man X, it was uh, a post apocalyptic world, but mm-hmm. in the Mega Man Battle Network, it was like. Uh, Almost like Pokemon kind of thing where everybody had their own Mega Man uh, and you would battle each other. It was like a friendly okay. thing. Uh, it was definitely catered more towards kids. Yeah, it sounds like a whole different thing. It was 100% <laughs> different from the original Mega Man and the X series. 100% different. Uh, because in the original and the X, if you beat a boss, you got their power up. You got their weapons. But it wasn't that way in... Uh, uh, the Battle Network series. It was okay. completely different. Uh, they weren't trying to be like X or anything. They were trying to be different, and I enjoyed it. Uh, but that was my first introduction to Mega Man, especially with the anime and stuff when I was younger. And then uh, my buddy then told me about X, and then I really loved it. Um, but yeah, so that was my. I just wanted your opinion yeah. on the Battle Network. I loved cool. it. Uh, I still haven't played Battle Network yet, but I'd like to. Yeah, it's one of those games I need to go back and play. It's one of those things. It's uh, And this is true for television, too. It's like there's so much good stuff out there. Yeah. The music, like, you just n- feel like you never get a chance oh, to, like, yeah. experience everything. Yeah, like, there's so many video games I want to play, yeah. like, that are old. Yeah. you know that i haven't gotten to play yet and then simultaneously there's all these new video games <laughs> still coming out every day that i want to play i know i'm like i can't no keep way. up my wallet's crying Hold on, <laughs> slow down exactly. i'm gonna buy you just slow down and time Eventually. like some Eventually. of these games yeah. are you know like 40 hours to beat like yeah. that's a full-time job if you're trying to get it done <sighs> In a certain amount of time. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually come to appreciate games that are more to the point. <laughs> and yeah, like less dragging out. I, yeah, I'm I'm a mix between them. Uh, when it comes to uh, uh, like an RPG or JRPG, I want it to be long. I don't care. Like, yeah, I want my money's worth. But then when it's like kind of cool uh, mechanic game, a fun little adventure game, yeah, I'm I'm with you to the point. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Another good mechanic is it Katamari. Have you played oh. that game? <laughs> yeah, that you're mechanic. basically you start out as just like a tiny ball, and then you're just like rolling around and stuff is sticking to your ball. Like I've never seen that in any other game, and it 
that game is freaking fun. Such a simple mechanic, but so addictive. Oh, yeah. So addictive. Dude, I, oh, man. I was I trash talking so that, that game. game. <laughs> uh, my buddy, I remember seeing that, and my buddy was all like, dude, it's it's awesome. I'm like, that is the dumbest thing. <laughs> exactly. It looks dumb. Until you until play you it. Until you play it, and it's so satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, remember, I remember saying, this is it. And then he was like, all right, give me the controller. And I was like, hold on. <laughs> exactly. I think I beat that game in like two days because I was just like, I, don't know, I had like calluses on my thumbs because I it like, was pretty tough at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, when you get to like the later levels. Yeah. And uh, we, we did that as one of our episodes. And I gave Eric a challenge to like find oh all the my gifts. God, that was so you know hard. how you can find the presents? Uh, yeah. You're supposed to roll them up. And I, he was supposed to find like all the presents in the whole game, and he could. Well, without do it. consulting a guide or anything. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, I could do it if I was looking at a guide, but man, the I one can do anything with a guide. <laughs> the ones that were just terrible. Do you do you remember the bear and the cow level where it was just roll up one bear and roll up one cow? I I remember the bear and cow. But and I once you and once you rolled it up, like it would kick you out. Yeah, like, it was like once you got one thing stuck to your ball that was the whole level oh. so it, it probably you probably played him and it lasted like one second <laughs> yeah and then you're like oh i'm not gonna do that again not to this stage where i can just roll up as much as i want no those were t- like yeah those are like the later levels where it, it gives you the specifics like you can't roll up this amount or this and yeah th- that was tough because i remember like outside looking in was like that's it to the game it's just you just roll up and that's it and then i thought there was no challenge so they started introducing challenges and then i was like oh okay i see the appeal now yeah and then having a time limit and all that stuff that that helps too but yeah that's a good game mechanic yeah but those presents were so hard to get in those levels just because you had to avoid anything that was a bear or anything that was a cow and you had to get your Katamari up to a certain size in order to even get the present. So it was just like, oh, man. <laughs> oh, and they count, like, uh, a poster of a cow as a cow. Yeah. You know, like, you things know. that aren't technically, like, a cow. Oh, it sucked because oh, you, man, the Katamari would get that. so yeah. big and the objects would be so little and you couldn't yeah. really even tell. And you'd roll up, like, some pine cone, cone or, or not pine cone, but traffic cone or something that had cow spots on it. It was like, oh, that's a cow. Yeah, oh. I was like, oh, this is stupid. <laughs> God, I do not remember that. But yeah, it's funny how some games they sound dumb and they look they kind of look dumb, but then once you play them, you're like, "This is so much fun." One hundred percent. I felt yeah. that about we did the new Pokemon Snap game, mm-hmm. and I was like, "You're just taking pictures." Of Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a photographer, so I like photography, but I'm like, "That sounds kind of boring." But then I that was another one I got like hyper fixated on. <laughs> and it was like every day Eric would come home, and I was like playing Pokemon Snap. <laughs> <laughs> he, ever, could, he could hear the music and I could just hear him laugh when he would walk in I'm like just playing that game again <laughs> did you ever play the uh, N64 one? Um, no well, he, we bought it after oh, we okay. played this yeah. one and I played it for a little bit but it's kind of like I find that it's hard to go from playing the new uh, greatest new latest one. version yeah. where everything's 100%. really pretty and clear to try to go back to play that where everything is like 8 bit or 16 bit yeah. and it's like, it's like the really you can barely models. even like you can barely even tell like is that a pokemon <laughs> like is that a tree <laughs> like <laughs> I, so gonna, I should have played that one first and then yeah. played the new one i was going to say especially with the uh, batman arkham series uh it was a huge jump from asylum to city and I, I recently just played and platinum uh, uh Asylum and it's slower. It's so like you're used to night because mm-hmm. that's the, your first one that you played. Man, if you ever play Asylum, you're gonna be like, damn, I can't fly. I, I can't you can't do the dive bomb and stuff. I need to start thinking ahead. Like, oh, if I want to play this game, let me check <laughs> and see if there's any though. other Sometimes older ones like, that no. I should play first. You yeah. Know? <laughs> I feel you though. Sometimes I'm like, no, I want to play the newest one. What are yeah. you talking about? Yeah. Like, this one, well, the one looks better. I don't know. Well, just the graphics wise, some of those old ones, it's like you can't even <laughs> tell what you're looking at. It's it really, it really is bad on some of them. Yeah, hey, that's what you had, and you liked it. <laughs> yeah, true. But yeah, even like I don't know, uh, Mario back in the day, it looks pretty good. At least you can tell what everything is. Like playing that now, I'm not like, ugh, this is horrible. I can't tell what things are, but like some people didn't do as good a job with like 
the pixels, uh, like, I guess. Uh, uh, Mario 64, dude, I thought that was, like, the greatest graphic game. Even as a kid, I was like, this this is a video <laughs> game. Like, yeah. this, like we've made it. Like, yeah. you can't get this any better it. than this. Stop I remember, now. <laughs> I remember playing, like, Gran Turismo, like, 2 or something. Whatever the one for PS2 was. I was, I, and I remember thinking, like, this is as good as it can get. <laughs> like, yeah. how, how do you make graphics better than this? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, okay, yeah, now we can blow that out of the water. It's like, yeah, uh, I think now it's pretty much, I mean, you can't really get much better oh, yeah, than it is now, better. I don't think. No, you can always get better. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for but sure. But not, unless it's just looking, like, super hyper-realistic. I don't know, things look pretty realistic now. But, yeah, you're right. We don't know. It, it probably yeah. will look way different. You'll say that, and then they'll come out with some other advanced yeah, you're like true. oh man i can't even play a ps4 game anymore that's so bad i mean <laughs> but like i really want like a pick a kid's brain of like all these like newer graphics games that's new to us but like they're just like that's their default mm-hmm. and then they look in the past and like you guys played that that's right. trash yeah. <laughs> and then but to them it, it can only go up from there and I mean, we're still experiencing that, and we're we're seeing like near the beginning. And but I just want to know, like their default brain. It's like, <laughs> uh, do they have that one point? Like especially with music, like every now and then you want to listen to a classic and stuff. But uh, I wonder if they have that. Like, oh, you know what? I want to play the classics. <laughs> I wonder if they right. Yeah. It probably depends on like the fan like if you're um a kid of someone like us that plays video games mm-hmm. and they're and they're playing the old video games and you're seeing your parents play those they're probably like more interested yeah. than if they don't have if they only know new stuff but and their parents don't play video games yeah you know they gotta have someone to introduce them because i don't think a kid's naturally gonna be like yeah let me play a video game from the early 90s like before, <laughs> yeah. 20 years before i was born you I mean, know no, i don't do that i don't go back to atari or uh old really old computer games like i look i went back to rogue just because i was curious like you know it, it started a uh, whole genre of roguelike or rogue light games that are just like nuts so i did go back and just just to check it out for a little bit but yeah, I very rarely go back and look at a very old game. I did only for two, uh, Zelda and um, Final Fantasy, Final Fantasies uh, one, two, and all that. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, like because uh, I played every single Final Fantasy like uh, number up until uh, twelve, like, and then I stopped. There's so many of those. <laughs> yeah. And so, like that one, I went back. I I wanted to Zelda two. It was like, oh, let me. I'm a huge fan, so let me play like the original one mm-hmm. and stuff. The original one actually holds up. I don't care. Yeah, I think I think uh, even the old Final Final Fantasy games are pretty good. Yeah, I I really do think they hold up. But yeah, so like we, or my nephew was like twelve, I think he just turned twelve, or maybe he's eleven. <laughs> I always get I have five nieces and nephews, hands. and I get all their ages <laughs> like mixed up. I've but um, that. so he's like really into Apex Legends, yeah, and um. There's like some other one he's really into, but we'll be like trying to connect with him because like we play video games too. And we're like, so have you ever played Mario? <laughs> and he's just like, no, like <laughs> that's so old. Like I'm not, gonna, you know, he's like, he's like in that phase now where he's everything he does it needs to be cool, you know? Yeah. And so like some stuff, it's just like he's not gonna play because that's not like the cool game, you yeah. know. <laughs> Like that's for little kids. Yeah, that's, that's for, for little, little kids. kids. It's like, like Call of Duty and all this. Yeah, I'm in fifth grade. I can't play that. <laughs> you know? I I'm I'm thankful I never had that with games. Like uh, I remember somebody was trying to bully me one time. It's like, wow, you play Final Fantasy, and I'm like, yeah. Have you ever played it? It's pretty good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I just always like defended myself on that. Oh, that's and, good. Yeah. But uh, but I I know that feeling though. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I had that crisis with uh, Power Rangers. I I liked Power uh, Power. Rangers. I did too. And I remember some kids on the playground being like, "Oh, you still like Power Rangers?" <laughs> or they they said that to some other kid, not me. And then I got super worried. I'm like, "Oh, should I not watch this anymore? <laughs> I'm too old for this." And I still oh, remember right? like really liking it and just being torn between like, oh, I guess I'm too old for this. <laughs> yeah. That, that hit too 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 close to home. Um, I had, I stopped around like seventh grade 
And but like I was pretty closeted in middle school about it because like in elementary I was like super yeah uh, uh, like oh I want the newest Megazord and stuff <laughs> like oh did you watch the latest episode of Power Rangers like Ninja Storm and stuff and then in sixth grade I remember somebody making fun of me for it and I was like oh no like nobody likes Power Rangers anymore yeah <laughs> and, then, and then I had a friend come over one time uh and like I had. Power Rangers Megazords like playing <laughs> in my room and stuff. And he was like, Well, I used to play with Power Rangers. So now when people came over, I'm like, Oh, oh. it's like, Where's your Power Rangers? And I'm like, Oh, I gave that up. Oh. But like, they were in my closet or I'm something. I'm not into shit. that anymore. <laughs> I know, oh, man. Sad. Kids are mean <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. And then you get it back in like high school. Like, you start you start to like not give a fuck anymore. Yeah. And then you're just like, Hell yeah, I like Power Rangers. Yeah. Like, and then dope. now, People yeah. wear the backpacks like, and stuff, and then you're just like, man, fuck you. Like, I, I, y'all are wearing that with no shame. You have to carry the shame exactly. that I have. Yeah. Exactly. And now we're, we're all just like, whatever. Whatever. And we just went, yeah. I think that, I think like the latest Power Rangers movie that came out a few years ago actually <laughs> yeah. did really good. Because <laughs> we all it. went to see it. Like all of us millennials or whatever. <laughs> I, um, uh, at NCG, they had the uh, cups with all the Power Rangers. Mm-hmm. I, not shamelessly, got all of them. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Wait, where, where are your Power Rangers at now? <laughs> well, and it was funny, like the cups. They should have kept were, them. They need to go like over here. Right? <laughs> like the cups. Uh, So freaking, uh, I was like, when I moved out of my parents' place, I was like, Yo, where are the cups at? Oh, like, no. I was actually so scared. My parents, they retired down in Florida, mm-hmm. and I went to go visit them. I went to their shed, and there they were. And I was oh, like, yay. what? Like, you guys had them? And then my mom was like, you can take them. And I was like, nah, you can have them. Oh. As, long, as long as they're safe. Yeah. Like, that's all I care exactly. about. Yeah. And then the Megazords, like, I've had literally, like, not all of them, but a lot of them up until a certain point. And then I got so sad one day when, like, I lost them. And then I was, like, when I started working and stuff, and I was just like, you know what? Let me add money. Let me go ahead and start collecting them. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Dude, I, I went on eBay. I went on Amazon. People are charging, like, close to $1,000 for them, hundreds of dollars. And I'm like. Holy crap. And then I thought to myself, I was like, wait, I owned a bunch of them. And, and used, too. They're, like, 100 used yeah. and, and all that stuff. And I'm like. You're telling me I could have paid for college with my Megazords? Right. (laughs) Some Goodwill probably got those a long time ago. God. Like, I still kick myself when I think about that. (laughs) Yeah, you never know with some of this old stuff. It's kind of might pay to hold on to some some of it. They were my modern uh, uh, baseball cards. (laughs) I was like, damn it. Man, I was super big into the baseball cards as a kid, too. I yeah, was I was always to told, like, ooh, baseball card, that's a good investment. Yeah, I had like, Beckett, you could, you could look up the prices of your cards. <laughs> like it was a thing, I guess. Yeah. yeah, now it's just like, I don't even, I mean, I think my brother still collects baseball cards, but not like, not like, you know, really into it or whatever. Oh, yeah. I was just talking to a friend about this, and like, she was saying like, with her son, it's, it's the Pokemon cards, mm-hmm. and I was just like, it's is is baseball cards still a thing? Like I know Pokemon <laughs> cards is is still a thing. Like I think that's your first introduction as a kid. Like you'll never know how to play them. You just you just trade them. They just that's look it. cool. Yeah, yeah you, holographics and that's a that's a you just wanted a lot of cards, most holographics, and then that was it. And to be able to trade, mm-hmm. that's it. No. <laughs> I mean, you can't really do anything with baseball cards. You can't really, like, play. You know, like, <laughs> yes. oh, yeah. Good point. <laughs> Trying yeah. to imagine, like, what kind of card game would you come up with with baseball cards? Like, you have all line positions or something. <laughs> you, you make a, a field. <laughs> yeah. I don't fucking know. I'm sure someone out there has probably done it. You get bored enough. You, uh, you, you can come up with something, up with something for sure. <laughs> um, my favorite gameplay uh, slash mechanics are... Uh, I love stealth games. Like, that's... Love. So that's, the box, getting in the box in Metal Gear Solid 2, sneaking around. It. I actually do love that mechanic. Yeah. <laughs> it's such an absurd mechanic. Because it's, it's so like, silly. The guards go, like, back and forth between, like, this, like two checkpoints. And it's like, all of a sudden, there's a box there, and they're not going to, like... 
Check and they're it out. just like, they don't even care. It doesn't even matter. That box wasn't there two seconds ago. But they're like, whatever. <laughs> Metal Gear Solid 3 is by far the best one. It's my favorite one. And, uh, like, I mean, you, you, you can still get a box, but, like, you're mainly in the jungle. And, like, you have to, like, cover yourself in camo. Oh. And, like, you have to paint your face, wear the right clothing. And they have, like, this camo index in the corner. So it'll go from like zero percent to one like ninety nine percent. You're cool. trying to blend in yeah. the environment. It's really really cool. I love it. Uh, any stealth game, it's just because like it's so easy to you know go gun blazing and stuff. And don't get me wrong, like the game doesn't punish you per se for doing that. Uh, it just makes it a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. And there's a challenge to that. But I love stealth because. I, I do like a challenge, and stealth is already a challenge, and it feels good. It it is rewarding when you get past people without killing them. And you're like, oh yeah, yeah I was a ninja. <laughs> like I could have killed you, but I didn't. <laughs> like I like, spared so you. Sweet. I was I was God in this moment. <laughs> I let you live. <laughs> like, so I, 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 stealth mechanics and fly mechanics. Uh, like Arkham Knight, I think is one oh, of the yeah. uh, uh, best ones. And and uh, uh, you probably have a big bigger video game knowledge than me it has there been a game that like was successful in, in flying mechanics i feel like there hasn't been and even with the advanced technology that we have today i feel like barely a game has done flying slash gliding right <laughs> hmm. and i think back to the pilot wings games but those are kind of older yeah um and then, like, uh, you know, obviously, like, the flight simulator games are pretty big. But, you know, those aren't really, I don't know if those are all that popular. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just like, man, there hasn't been, like, a really, really cool flying, like, and I'm talking, like, Dragon Ball Z style. Oh, like, oh, okay. So not, like, planes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, in Arkham Knight, you know. Yeah. Flying like, uh, okay. <laughs> Arkham Knight is... Definitely top five. Uh, one of the Pokemon games, um, uh, Auras, uh, for the DS, uh, they kind of did it right as well. And my buddy tells me a Monster Hunter game did it right. I haven't played it. But yeah, like, there hasn't been, like, games uh, that introduce a flying mechanic always introduce, like, this limit to it. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you can only fly for a couple of seconds and only this high and only this fast, uh, and only in this certain area of the game. Uh, but, like, I want some, like, with the advanced technology that we have now, I'm like, yo, somebody make a game where you can, like, just yeah. free fly. Yeah. I feel like that'd be a good, like, Superman game. You yeah. know, like, yeah. I don't even know if they've made a new Superman game no. recently, but. What about, well, like, the not? new Spider Man games? Like, I've heard those are really Oh, good. man. Yeah, I've played but that. But that's probably still limited because he can't fly. Well, but, like, no. but no, no, no. But it's actually really dope. Like, I just love anything aerial. Uh, mm -hmm. And, like, you can go to, like, the tallest building, skydive, and then web sling. Oh, my. The web slinging <laughs> in that is dope. It makes you not want to fast travel. Like, you have the option of fast travel. <laughs> you, you're going to not want it. Yeah. It's, it's nice. Dope. I need to go back and play those games. It, I, I recommend them. It's, it's really good. Um, but yeah, that's, oh God, I, I freaking love flying. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I, like, I, I went skydiving, like, uh, uh, last year and I'm planning on going again and like, I, I'll just be like, this is the coolest thing. Like, give me something kind of realistic to this. Yeah. I don't know. I yeah. want to go skydiving. I've never been. It's always it's kind dope. of been on like a bucket list sort of thing. It was on my bucket. It was number but one. But now I'm like, I've kind of gotten a little older now. And I'm like, I don't know. No, 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 no. <laughs> don't, don't let that. You do it. Like definitely do it. Uh, it's, I would have it's, to. It's, I don't know. I need to find people. I'll have to go with you or something. Because yeah. Eric's definitely not going to do yeah, it. Yeah, I hate heights. <laughs> you don't like heights? Uh, so like roller coasters either? Uh, roller coasters are fine. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I might. It might be all right. Dude, like... It, and this is all I'm going to say real out. quick about skydiving. Uh, it's so, like, okay, like, I'm not afraid of heights, and I've always wanted to go skydiving. When, like, when you're on the plane, uh, the moment you fall, like, <laughs> that, that split second, once you fall, for, like, three seconds, not even, maybe one second, you're going to be scared because you you just went from zero to 
Holy yeah. shit, I'm falling. Yeah. Yeah. You hit terminal velocity in about, I think, five, ten seconds. Once you hit that, you that's it. It's over. Like, once you accept it, yo, I'm falling. That's it. Like, you can't be yeah, like, all right, pull me back up. Like, you're, you're falling. You just so you need just time to, like, adjust a little bit, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, like... Uh, so you you fall and then the moment your belly is towards the ground, uh, they'll tap you and then you can open up, and then you can just start dancing and do whatever <laughs> you want pose, and but like yeah, literally once you hit terminal velocity, uh, that's it. Like you just accepted it. You're falling. You you the view is beautiful. You're just like, oh okay, they're yeah. down to the wind and all that. You're free falling for about a minute, and then. Um, you deploy your parachute, and that's the greatest moment is when you deploy the parachute, and then you're gliding for three, five minutes, and the... Like, so the whole thing <laughs> takes, like, ten minutes? Yeah. Dang. Like, it, 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 I it, thought it would be so much longer. I, I, I thought that, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think you're falling. <laughs> I know, but you're really high up. So. I know. It, it takes a couple of minutes, so, like, the plane is circling up. You mm -hmm. get to around 13,000 feet, and it takes like 20 minutes 10 minutes just to get up get there up, yeah. and then you fall and it's only like five minutes like, yeah <laughs> but i mean it makes sense uh but yeah like and then once you open up your parachute like it's a smooth ride down like you're not going too fast and you're you're just admiring the view and you're just like you just went from like ah to nice and it, let me like, take a minute yeah and yeah. look at it, it, it's great view. if you don't want to go i'm never going to pressure you but <laughs> it's, it's it's safer than people think like yeah. it's, it's not oh, i'm sure it is I'm still and you had go. some like you can't um you probably were connected to someone yeah. right like yeah, you can't I'm still do it by yourself, somebody. I think, until you do, like, a bunch of jumps, right? It's, like, four or five. That's and then, it, and then you can do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. That's not that, even that many. Yeah, I've already jumped twice. Um, uh, now, I'm, I I already paid for my third. I just yes. wait till the weather is a little bit cold, yeah. or warmer. Is um, that your goal? Do you eventually want to jump by yourself? Yeah. Nice. Just because I want to jump by myself. Yeah. Like, really yeah. dope. I had a friend who used to be one of the um, instructor guys or whatever, nice. the people that would the, do the tandem thing with tandem. you. Yeah. I don't know what you call them, but no, you jumped tandem. probably hundreds of times out of the plane, you know? Yeah. And uh, it's it's so cool. The, the skydiving people there are so funny because uh, they, they make jokes. Like, the number one thing people ask them is like, oh, so how many times do you jump? And they like to mess with you and be like, oh, this is my first time. <laughs> <laughs> And but they jump like thousands of oh, times. Oh yeah. Because <laughs> like, uh, one, uh, I think the average is you jump like twenty to thirty times a day. And Holy crap! Something like that, and I mean, it depends on who you are. Yeah. Uh, it depends on the place and the weather, but uh. At that point, you're just it's probably just like routine. You probably don't even get any kind of adrenaline rush yeah. or anything. You're just like whatever. I mean, you're still you're still falling. I mean, yeah. If you're doing it like thirty times a day, you gotta kind of get used to that. I know, no, you, you for sure. Like the one guy I jumped with, my first instructor, he was like, "Oh, I, I'm almost close to two thousand jumps," wow. and he records every single jump, and uh, and I told him, "I'm like, does it ever get stale?" And then he's like. Not really, but <laughs> it's like obviously when you're strapped to somebody, it's more for them than it is for you. Yeah. You're just looking out for their safety, and that's it. And so, like he's like that time, it feels like work. But when I jump by myself, it's great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. But I mean, to each their own. It depends on the person. <laughs> um, so we're almost to the end. Um, what makes a game fun? Like, what do you guys look for in a game? Um, Ooh. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff like good graphics. Um, I think it's good when they uh, when people don't overcomplicate like the story, you know. And I personally like. I think it's a good sign of or a sign of a good game when you can sort of learn the mechanics as you're playing the game, yes. and you don't need oh, tutorials. Yeah, Tutorial. yeah, yeah. I hate tutorials. You, gotta, you gotta bury the tutorials into the actual playing the game. Yeah, I hate having like a whole separate like tutorial or something where you have to do separate training just yeah. like no i'm not about that life <laughs> yeah it feels too much like work <laughs> <laughs> feels like school I'm not here for school <laughs> and there's fun ways you can do tutorials where yeah. like uh uh have you guys played breath of the wild yeah yeah it's a great game. I, honestly i think it, 
I really do think it's the best one of uh, uh, tutorial uh, out there. Yeah, I need. I haven't played any Zelda games. <laughs> what? So I definitely need to play. <laughs> we haven't done one yet. Like when I was younger, I had a Game Boy, like yeah. an OG one, and I had nice. Tetris, and I had like whatever Link's Zelda Awakening. game was out by then. What yeah. Links? Uh, Link, Links Awakening. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I was probably, I don't know, I was just too young to get it. I, I remember just randomly walking around in Zelda, not really knowing like what I was I've supposed to there. be doing. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, I don't know, since they never played a Zelda game, but I'm sure, like, I do want to play Breath of the Wild. I heard that's really good. And now yeah. that I've played a lot more video games, I'm sure I can figure out what I'm supposed to do. But yeah, I remember being a little kid and I was like, I have no idea <laughs> what to do. And I'm a little sore. I don't know. I gave up on that. <laughs> it's like me with mist. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it just doesn't appeal to me. Yeah. But I like, I don't know, a lot of different things. There's a little, there's a lot of different things that make video games good. But for me, I like to not be like too stressed out um, and not to have to think like too, too hard, mm -hmm. you know? Oh, you know personally <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, to me it's a that harmony of like new ideas what what the mechanics are what this how you tie that and with the story it's just and the music and how it all comes together really it's got to be kind of like the four it's yeah it's like graphics music uh gameplay story it's got to be like a combination of those four tied together what if uh, the game, like Rocket League, doesn't have a story? Yeah, actually, that's it. a good point. <laughs> uh, if you have a good enough mechanic, you don't need a story. And just know what, what you're good at, what, what people want to play your game for. If it's for 3D multiplayer, make a game for 3D multiplayer. Don't try to make it something it doesn't need to be. Yeah. Just concentrate on what what you're good at and what that what you want it to be. Yeah, I, I, like, I like it when they're kind of focused. And not trying to do too much. Yeah. Or, or actually, honestly, sometimes it's good to play a game like uh, Grand Theft Auto Five or something where it's just sandbox, like yeah. around, do whatever, whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. It's I, tricky. Like. Yeah. Yeah. There's just so much that can make a game good. Yeah. It's it's, there's definitely a formula kind of thing because uh, you know, if if you have a game like, don't get me wrong, I love a good story game uh, in my actions adventures. But like somebody once said, uh, I saw this online, somebody said that if you make a game where the story is, you're focusing so much on the story and not enough of the gameplay, then it just becomes a movie. It yeah, just becomes exactly. a TV show. And then if you focus too much on the gameplay and stuff, then like, uh, but you don't offer like an incentive or it's a motivation, then like, you know, people just won't play it. Uh, oh, I have to do X to get to, I have to do to get from point A to point B. I have to do X, but X is like I don't get Y. That dumb formula. But anyways, uh, so yeah, I I kind of felt that. Um, to me, to me, like I mean, I still don't know. Uh, I think what makes a game fun is is that like uh, know what know what you're aiming for. Uh, so if you're gonna make a multiplayer game and not a story game, just focus on being a multiplayer game. Don't. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And then if you're making a story, uh, like I don't know, make make it feel because the difference between a movie and a game is a movie tells you who the hero is, but a game you're supposed to feel it. And like, don't get me wrong, like not games doesn't need to be first person. And oh, like I can play a story, but I still need to feel like the hero. I still need to feel like Link or the Cloud and stuff. And uh. Like the, yeah, they have their own personalities, but I need to feel like, yo, I'm this one swinging the sword. I'm the one, you know, jumping through buildings and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I think that's what makes a game fun is that you can feel it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like you want a good story to drive the game, but you won't want it bogged down in story. You want to, you don't want to, especially at the very beginning. I feel like a lot of RPGs do this where they just hammer you with story and story. Mm -hmm. It's like, I haven't even started playing this yes. game. Oh, yeah. I don't know if this game is going to be fun. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah, let me, give me a chance to play the game and then like start throwing some story at me and yeah. stuff. I think that's the point. We're playing video games for fun, not for work. <laughs> you yeah. know? I mean, some people are, but you know, we're playing to have a good time to escape from reality. 100%. And like, 
you got to be able to do that effortlessly without bringing us out of that reality, you know, or like making it too hard to like mechanically to play the game. Yeah. And, and, uh, like how I mentioned, like how Metal Gear is one of my favorite series. I honestly, if I was introduced to Metal Gear now with my limited time on playing games, <laughs> I don't think I could. I don't yeah. think I'll get into it. I'm glad I got into it when I was younger, like in high school and middle school, where I had a little bit more free time. Because I, I think there's a balance on that. Like uh, you said, it's like, listen, uh, like I don't want cutscenes to be this long. I want to get to the game. That's mm -hmm. why I bought it, because the trailer looked cool. That's one thing that pisses me off, too, is trailers of games. <laughs> it's like... Uh, they just show a lot of the cinematic stuff and I'm yeah. like dude show me gameplay exactly. Exactly. that's yeah. why I'm buying it like, I know, I know you made some pretty cinematics but yeah. that doesn't tell me anything about the game yeah I'm like oh, cool is it fun though yeah, yeah that's why sometimes like thank god for Twitch now because yeah. you can just go if you want to know what a game's like to play that's true. you just can go watch someone else play and get like a pretty good idea of like how the mechanics work and like where you're gonna really be doing and not like just what the company wants you to see because they're trying <laughs> to sell you the game. Yeah. Especially so. like if you're watching somebody Twitch play a game from like the beginning and then you can get their natural reaction because you, you might go through the same thing where they mm -hmm. go like, oh, this is stupid. Like you have to do this to do this. And then it's like, oh, I kind of don't like that. Okay, that's a little bit of a turn off. Or wow, the beginning looks amazing. And so now... uh. uh when trailers are coming out before the game comes out, they'll say things like on YouTube, oh, the first 14 minutes of the game, because that's what people are gravitating oh, yeah, towards, because yeah. it's like, this is not spoiler. I'm going to play the first 14 minutes. What am I in for? Exactly. Yeah. What am I getting into? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm about to drop 60 bucks. On this. <laughs> like, it's so expensive. Yeah. Like... That's one of the reasons I like indie games, is because they yeah. give good competition to the like AAA titles and stuff. And in some cases, they're you know they're they're made passionately, usually by a smaller group, but they can be almost just as good in some ways. One hundred percent, and agree. they'll be free or like twenty bucks or something. Yeah, or you know whatever they want to release it for. But yeah, but they're like, but they're passionate about it. It's a small, it's a concentrated group, and I I'm all for that. Like I and and I think it says a lot. Like I wish bigger companies can look at the indie games and get scared and be like wow, this game beat ours and we put millions of dollars into it. Maybe we need to scale it back and like go back to like, hey, what what do fans want to yeah. play? Yeah. I think that's what happened with Hades because that game just blew up. I think it even like one game of the year or something. And I think it's it did, an indie yeah. game. And like, it's a really beautifully made game and they did a really good job. But obviously, they probably didn't spend like millions of dollars on it. Like... Batman games or yeah. whatever, you know. Yeah. Well, a lot of times too, like especially nowadays, like a game will start off as an indie game and then it'll be bought by a big studio. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think of like Minecraft started off as an indie game. Mm -hmm. Um, Rocket League definitely started off as an indie game bought <laughs> by a big studio. Fall Guys, like a bunch yeah, of these games, started sense. off as kind of indie games. And that's true. I they, didn't think about that. They got their foot in the door, and then the big <laughs> studio is like, "Oh, I'll buy you and improve you and yeah. put more microtransactions." <laughs> oh, <and> stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like it's good in some ways because you do need like the um whatever like the bandwidth or something like for Fall Guys. You know, like a bunch of people are playing all at the same time, so I can yeah. see how like a bigger company would help. Like with that aspect, but yeah, all those I hate micro transactions, <laughs> dude. Like, let me earn everything. I don't want to yeah. buy anything. Right, it's more let satisfying to that way it. too. Remember, like, uh, like I remember as a kid when I owned uh, Super Smash Brothers for the N sixty four. There was four blocks. You trying to figure out. Oh, you could get four other characters. How how can you? And then I remember going to school and it was like, yo, did you know Luigi's in Smash? And it's like, no, he's not. It's like, yes, he is. Like, uh, you, you got to do X, Y, and Z in order to get him. Yeah. And then that was a challenge. I, I couldn't wait to go home and, and play it and mm -hmm. be like, man, let me unlock Luigi. <laughs> and, oh, you beat the game, you unlock Jigglypuff. What? <laughs> yeah. But now it's like, you want Jigglypuff? Give us 20 bucks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty I don't much. wanna. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty bucks for chicken. Yeah. yeah, but no microtransactions, uh, pay to win. Uh, yeah. And yeah, exactly. Some games do it well, where pretty much 
you can pay for like cosmetic things, like things that aren't gonna net help you win the game. Yeah. And I think that's those are whatever. Fun. Like if you yeah. like that's just like going shopping for clothes or whatever. You yeah. want to spend your money on that, whatever. But like if you need to pay to get like a better gun or something. That's not fair because then only the rich people are going to be good at the game. Yeah, but the one that pisses me off even more is story content. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh. oh, give us 20 bucks and uh, and and you get the real ending of, to oh. the story. Or you get like more levels or, or more gameplay and, oh, our game isn't finished but here are the, the next three DLCs that's going to come out later this year. And again, like I say this like I would love to be able to interview somebody in the industry mm -hmm. and have them defend it. Like I, I want, yeah, I like hear. why not just wait and then release it all at once? Yeah, you know? like yeah. a finished game <laughs> from the beginning would be nice. Yeah, and like I've heard the one argument is, and this is where it's like games are expensive, and there was I remember there was an article that uh, soon games are going to be either seventy or eighty bucks. Was the fact that like, oh, there's so much money and time that's going into the game that that's why they're doing pre-orders so they can mm -hmm. go ahead and get some money so they can go ahead and like fund the games and then also uh dlcs so like hey we're, we're done with this part of the game but we're still working on other parts of the game give us more money and then you can have it i heard that argument and i get that but again fans are willing to wait uh if the price of games goes up people are, are going to buy it it's going to suck uh but that you need to slow down the outputs of games because if like three games you want comes out and they're all 80 bucks, you're going to make a choice to buy only one. Yeah. yeah cause you can't play all three at the same time no. anyway. So yeah. And I've gotten to the point where I try not to support developers as much that do those things. Yeah. I try yeah. just to go towards the ones that aren't doing those. <laughs> and, and, and you're right on the indies because that's, that's one of the markets on that. It's like, Oh, if I buy this indie game, I get, this and then that's it that's yeah all you I get the whole game <laughs> yeah all right so last thing uh is have you guys ever and if, if you don't it's it's cool i i have one in mind <laughs> do you have an idea for a game like that if somebody were to watch this it's like yo please make this <laughs> make this into a game or whatever like Nothing something else? i want to be a game it's not a game or an idea for a game or an idea for a game Man, I had one in college. I was like thinking I would design it. I would be this game that took place in a post-apocalyptic uh, <laughs> apocalyptic world. The snow is like nuclear winter. Like, oh man, I had a great idea for it, but <laughs> yeah, just yeah. never fleshed it out. <laughs> I've never even thought about it. <laughs> and I'll be honest, I'm surprised I haven't. And now I'm going to think about it. Yeah, but I never really thought about it before. I got one. I think I think it's good. Like I really see this being a thing, and I hope if this goes viral, like somebody can have this idea for free, and then <laughs> if this game gets made, I'm gonna reference this video and be like, "I said that. I yeah. said that." Give me a copy. Like, for free. <laughs> yeah, just give me a copy. That's it. Don't even pay me. Just give me a copy. Uh, you guys know about the Hitman games? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like, have you guys played them? No. No. I've seen. <laughs> I've seen. People play on though. It's a stealth game. It looks fun. That. It, it's like um, it's, it's a actually one I want to play. But oh man, it, it is fun. It's 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 a, it's a mix between stealth and puzzle. Like, uh, like I mean, this is gonna sound bad, <laughs> but like you really do feel like a hitman. Like you're just, like stalking like the VIP who you're supposed to get, and then like you're trying to find out their movements and like okay, what can I manipulate to get my target. Or you can go gun blazing. Like it, the the world's <laughs> the world's your oyster. Yeah, what kind of hitman are you trying to be? <laughs> exactly. And so uh I thought, wouldn't it be cool to play as a bodyguard of like the target? Where you yeah. have to protect the target and there's a hitman. So I thought of it like in a multiplayer sense where like those five of you, four are the bodyguards, and then there's the one hitman, and like, but you know who the bodyguard is, you don't know who the hitman is. And but you can't just be babysitting the the target because the target has to do some speeches, mm -hmm. has to be on stage. You have to do other things, and every now and then, like your radio would be like, "Hey, there's some issues in the kitchen," and you, as a teammate, have to be like, "You go check it out. Nice. I'm staying here." Yeah. And then, "Hey, uh, there's a power leak over here. You need to fix it." And you have to spend a couple of minutes fixing it, and you have to leave the target exposed. 
how dope would that be? Yeah. And then yeah. like you, you, I can see like you get thirty minutes into you got to protect the target for thirty minutes. The hitman has thirty minutes to get to the target, and then. How dope would it be to be <laughs> successful or like your target, you, you, the person yeah. you're supposed to protect dies and you're blaming your teammates? Like, it's yeah. fucking your fault, man. Like, it sounds like it could be like the next Hitman game if they made if they took, took it online or something yeah. and yeah. made it like multiplayer. Sounds like a combination of like Hitman and Among Us or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I could see this being a thing. So, like, game developer, if you're watching this, yeah. just do it. Who, like, who makes Hitman if you're out there? Like, just, just do it. <laughs> you're you, watching you, this. You guys can do you're it. You're watching it right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, anyways, um, thank you guys so much for coming on to oh, the wait, show. Oh, wait, can I ask you a question? Yes. If you were going to be on our podcast, Dom, what game would you pick? Probably Metal Gear Solid 3. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, no wait, more wait, Metal wait, Gear Solid wait, wait, games. Wait. I veto. I veto this and that. <laughs> Pro- like, fresh in my head is Metal Gear Solid 3. If not, uh, it's, it's definitely going to be a game that's on my shelf that I mm-hmm. played. Uh, and I have some more upstairs. Um, but I'll definitely let you know. Metal Gear Solid 3 <laughs> so is just fresh Metal in my Gear head Solid right 3 now. Metal Gear Solid 3 would be like your top. It's like it's fresh in my mind right yeah. now. Uh, pro- or Zelda Majora's Mask. Um, I know you guys haven't done that. Uh, yeah. either It's either going to be Final Fantasy, Metal Gear Solid 3, Zelda... Somewhere in those three. Somewhere in those three. Yeah, that's okay, a lot yeah. of games, though. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's cool. Yeah. No, so, but so I'd, I'd say whatever you'd want to pick is fine. Yeah. I mean, I'll definitely let you know then if you guys approve it. But, <laughs> but uh, uh, no, I, I, if you invite me on your show, I'll definitely be on it. The Would key, you uh, rap? Huh? Would you rap, though? Because we, we do like our guests to rap. Like music rap? Mm-hmm. I'm not that creative, but I'll do it. But I'll, I'll, tr- I'll do. Is it freestyle or do I? No, know? you can't write it. Freestyle. We write it. Ooh, okay, okay, yeah. We're not. I'm not that good at freestyle. No, okay, freestyle I'll, is hard. Man. Oh yeah, no, that's that's a skill. Uh, no, okay, yeah, rap up oh, for sure. Okay, yeah, that's, yeah. That's we just fun. like the last person we had on, uh, our friend Shelby. She's like never rapped before in her whole life, <laughs> and she like she, we actually helped her write it a little bit because she was like, I don't know what to do. So we don't feel it's not like yeah, it's not, that much pressure. We're not expecting you to be no. Like, I, okay, you know, that's that's I'll try to like come up with some some fun bars. <laughs> yeah, I I feel like I could come up with a couple of bars like yeah. just just for laughs. But Hell it's yeah. fun. Like yeah. if, oh man, did you? You, you you probably heard our Metal Gear, Gear Solid 2 rap, but that's mm-hmm. probably like one of the, my favorite ones. Uh, we, oh, I man. still quote it to Eric. I'm like, fuck the panda bears. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fuck stairs. Oh, yeah. Fuck, well, oh, yeah. It's like, like because whenever the you have a box and on the panda bears. Uh, and you walked on stairs, like they could see your legs. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fuck stairs. <laughs> stairs are the nemesis of the box disguise. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be a box on stairs. Yeah. And and then you can be there's certain boxes too like I think there's five and you have to match the box in the room because you do, yeah, yeah. They're, yeah they're like, like this was oh, out of place and the box is like right here <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know the the amount of attention to detail in that game and I played it when I was young and I was like oh I'm in a box I'm safe and they'd be like what's this box doing here I'm like <laughs> what they're this smart what. <laughs> Why didn't this work? They were like the smart AIs. That game was so ahead of its time. But anyway, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely wrap. Uh, awesome. I'll definitely mm-hmm. pick a game and uh, and then see if you guys approve it. But uh, <laughs> I, I'll try not to pick Metal Gear Solid Three. It, it's, it's definitely <laughs> no, time. I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'll be honest. I'll be like, please pick Zelda. Please pick Zelda. It'll probably be Zelda. But you don't have to make me happy. It's fine. I like playing games that I don't like. Too. <laughs> even you know, though like, I haven't played, I haven't you know, played you know, that like game it. yet, yeah. I'm just assuming I probably won't like it because <laughs> I didn't like two. So. I will yeah, listen. That's why it's number three. It's it's the prequel. It's what set the uh, 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 like story wise. It's what set the motion. Like, and what's cool about it is that like it's a standalone game. Like, you don't have oh, to okay. play really any other game to understand it. There's like fun Easter eggs, but it gotcha. holds its own. So Water. it doesn't answer all the questions they created in Metal Gear Solid 2 at the end of the game? No. <laughs> Dang. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Does It answers its own questions that it's set for this game. Oh, yeah. Mm. But not the questions that they said at the very end of Metal Gear Solid 2. It's like, yeah, they've all been dead the entire time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. It's, 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 it, 
Metal Gear Solid 2 was definitely the pinnacle of convoluted. <laughs> well, besides 4. But 3... <laughs> Three is more chill. Three okay. feels like an action movie, like a, okay. a, a political well, like action better. movie, war nice. movie. It's it's good. Cool. Yeah. But anyways, uh, uh, Nikki, Eric, thank you guys so much. Uh, where can people follow you and your podcast? Oh, well, hold on one second. <laughs> I would like to pull it up so I can see. <laughs> you gotta I always forget because we had to, you know, obviously just press any button is like too common. So we had to do, you know, like. Our Instagram is press any button underscore podcast. So I think Instagram is probably the best, but if you um, are on Facebook, you know, or Twitter, if you search for press any button podcast, you should be able to find it. Yeah, you can also find us on like Spotify, Apple Music, Google Music. Yeah. Or yeah, Apple Podcasts. Or um, Apple Podcasts. Google so. Podcasts, like all those places. Yeah. We're on you, YouTube, YouTube too. But we just put like a graphic with the audio, no video. Like this. so, real quick, like to put you on the spot, are you gonna try to do uh, a video podcast? I think like, eventually I want to like as a goal, life yeah. goal is what like record it like yeah, this. Yeah, I think it'd be fun to do that. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I mean, so, like, don't get me wrong. Like, my job is to make you guys feel comfortable and stuff. And there, there are some people who, like. The moment the cam they know the camera's recording, they get a little bit shy. Mm -hmm. Like that, it is a real thing. And my job is to try to make you forget about the cameras because the whole point of this podcast is like literally the cameras weren't here. This is how we would hang out. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's just being recorded. That's all it is. So I wanted to capture and rem the reminiscing time where we would shoot the shit, drink, talk about video games, whatever. And all it is is just being recorded. That's it. Yeah. So uh, I know, like he was so nervous about being coming on the podcast, and I was like, I was like, don't worry, like it's very <laughs> conversational. Do you not know, see your episode? I'm yeah. like, don't worry, it's just like we're talking to Dom. <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm used to like Which preparing. I have like two or three pages of just stuff for my podcast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. See, I I have questions, but only to keep myself on track. Like yeah. because yeah. like I'll, I'll ask questions. I'm like, all right, this is good. What, what time are we at? So I keep track of time. <laughs> But uh, no, I wing it. It, it, it. It's fine. But no, your your pod. There's nothing wrong with your podcast. It's it's supposed to be that way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, mine is supposed to be like shoot the shit. Yeah. That stuff. It's not supposed to be. Super yeah, I think fair. if you're interviewing people too, it's better to just be like more fluid. Oh yeah. That definitely. way, it's not like okay, question number one. Yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite video game yeah. of all time? Hold question on, number I got two. fourteen genres. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. That was dope. <laughs> All right. Well, Eric, thank you so much. So, so <laughs> Nikki. See, that's what I'm talking about. Like this table. So <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and listening. Peace. Yeah, thank you.